All right, let's give this another try. So, so sorry about earlier. The joys of being a working man. Sometimes you cannot control when you're going to get a work call. How's everybody doing today? Let me go ahead and pull up my chat. Oh, you know what? In order to do that, I also need to do, 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 do this, move this. Get that going, oh, so and sorry. there we go. There's that, and there's a chat. Moonlight, what's going on? How are you? Sands Undertale, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cosmic, what's going on? What's up, Gifu? Three, how are you, dude? Hope everybody's doing all right. You have no idea what's going on. I was actually streaming earlier today because I had the bandwidth, or so I thought. And then and I ended up getting a work call. Um, I'm actually on call on the weekends, but usually nothing happens on the weekends. So uh, something happened today. So I ended up having to drop in the middle of the stream, which was very unfortunate. I had like 40, 50 people on stream. It was actually going quite well, and I had to derail all that. So uh, kind of sucked. Kind of sucked, but I'm back at it. Um, and let me, um, just to be sure, one second, let me ping Lennon just directly so that he knows. Not sure, sure if you are up, but I am back on. Uh all right. Now, now, now. Uh, first and foremost, let me look, see. Uh, so cold, what's going on? Yeah, we can call suck. And this one uh, took like all day. I got the call at around what? No, first I got a call at 8 a.m. And then that went fine. I wrapped that up. And then I tried to stream and I got another call like around, I think, maybe 11, 12, something like that. And I didn't get done with that issue until 4. It really, really sucked. What's going on, GM? Doom, how are you all? What's going on? Doing good, my friend. The last stream and they caught me off guard. Yeah, it was unfortunate. <coughs> you know, but got to keep my priorities. I, I, I'm not quite balling out of control yet when it comes to this YouTube stuff. So I need to keep my job. So when they call me, I got to go ahead and handle business. It just is what it is. What's going on, Kunchu? How are you? Nikolai, forget to unplug it and plug it back in. If only it was that simple. But no, it was an actual, actual issue that I needed to deal with this time. I'm here for the graphics. <laughs> I played a literal freaking devil at Urban Shadows. Whoa, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Call it that with a specter. Crazy. What's going on, Darmo? Thanks for ever get to be a membership earlier today. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the uh, name of the subscriber, but I really appreciate it. I think you get to five membership. That was super cool. So we were doing Under Rail, a game that I have absolutely no familiarity with, but Lennon has been talking about this game for I don't know how long. So I, t I promised him that I'd at least give it a whirl and see uh, how I felt about it, at least a little bit. So we're going to go back into it. Give me just a second to spin that up and do this. Sledge, what's going on? How are you? Good evening to you as well. And let's see, game is coming up. So yeah, I got, last time we got as far as the character creation screen. <laughs> and then I got the call. Basically, we were just about to actually start into the game. So hopefully now we can actually get some gameplay in. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Again, uh, I know nothing about this game. So uh, it might completely suck. If it does, uh, don't blame me. Now, what I will do differently from what I was doing in the last stream, last stream I said I was gonna go with the Oddity XP system. I've decided against that. Uh, uh, one or two people reached out to me actually and basically gave some more context regarding the Oddity system and said like it really just doesn't hold up. It's not all that great. So we're gonna stick with the classic XP system where you get XP from killing enemies, doing quests, and utilizing certain skills. We're gonna go in that direction. See ghosts and fight ghosts. Nice. What's going on, Sam? How are you? Thanks for doing the stream, appreciate it. 
I'm sure you're a little tired after work. I sure am. So I don't know how long this stream will be, but um, uh, we'll see how it goes. Benjamin, what's up, man? Hope you're doing well. Are now under your control. <laughs> I can't wait till I'm able to do a tabletop game with you three. That seems like it's going to be so much fun. Greg, what's going on, man? How are you? Uh, no oddity is well balanced. So what do you feel like is the better way to play the game? It makes you and makes you appreciate exploration and risk taking. You know what? Okay, fine. It seems like that's supposed to be the way the game is played anyway. So you know what? We're gonna just go with it. Normal difficulty, and we'll stick with the oddity system. It's fine. It's fine. It makes you appreciate exploring. Hey, I don't mind things that make me appreciate exploring. All right, three, three. I vaguely remember what this was supposed to be. So, um, this we. I think we got like nine. I think we got like seven here. And we got nine here. Oh, that's right. And we have reduced constitution here. So 10 here and then 10 here. Okay. I heard this game is weird. That's what I heard as well. Moonlight weird and tough, but we'll see. Another desert. After the uh, dessert, after the lemon pound cake was finished off. What was it this time, Benjamin? What'd you make this time? All right, skills. Uh, we're gonna get throwing for grenades. We're gonna max out dodge and max out evasion. Found out that you can make a whipped cream like frosting if you use a whisk attachment for a stand mixer and I use a cream cheese for the fat. Hmm. <laughs> nice. Uh, lock, uh, lock picking for sure. And then let's see, we decide we want to go with thought control and temporal manipulation. Mind you, I don't know how either one of those work, but we'll see. And then electronics. And then do, 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 do. Um, how to make it creepy. <laughs> how to is intended is the intended way to play. The normal XP tend to be interesting. I didn't need to uh, play after you experienced the game already. Okay. It was devil's food. Nice. Um, lock picking, electronics, chemistry, tailoring. What do I want this last 15? Oh, 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 mercantile. That's where I want it. There we go. And then feats, um, I want, definitely want sprint. And then uh, nimble. All right, so let's review this because I know some of you weren't here. Oh, actually, let's also put name. Oh, and my freaking portrait. Let's do that as well. Oh, you know what? I need to switch up my portrait now that I think about it because before, um, I, want, I was going to go with this guy because he looked like Brotherhood of Steel from Fallout. And originally, I was going to go heavy armor and assault rifles. But I was convinced not to do that because I really like the concept of will and the way it seems like it's going to work in this game. So now, I need another portrait that kind of goes more with this. Mm, he's got kind of a Mr. Glass look to him. I love how varied the portraits are in this game. I think that's super cool. Oh, he's got kind of a scientist uh, uh, look to him as well, like a Miles Dyson type thing going on. You know what? I think I like that. I think I like that. I'll show. I want to back see if I do have a question. Do you use build or wing it? Um, uh, mixture of both. So there's a. Uh, uh, I'm actually playing this because there's a couple of people on my Discord server who are really big fans of Underrail, and so I told them that I, I'm. I've been telling them for months that I would live stream this game, and we got. Uh, I, I'm doing this like once, maybe at the most twice before we move into tyranny. And so uh, Lennon, the guy on Discord who loves this game, he gave me this build. Uh, I'm going to start out with it. And then depending upon how the game goes, I'll either stick with this or flow into something else. I don't know. I don't know. I've never played this game before. I know very little about it. So I'm going to kind of be winging it. We'll see. I assume I, I assume you're not a fan of the build. <laughs> Uh, and you don't have to worry about being a backseat driver. That doesn't bother me in the chat. It's all good. Like, if I decide it's a, it's a good advice, I'll go with it. And if I don't, then I don't. It doesn't annoy me. I remember you talking about the Night of the Hunter movie. Yeah, so I gave it a good watch. Then I proceeded to play it. Take it in one shot where he was tasked to deliver the threat. <laughs> so, uh, nice. 
So how did um, Night of the Hunter hold up uh, being an adult? Yeah, oddities here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should do a better job explaining this. I kind of rushed through it because we uh, went out through this last stream, but last stream, of course, got interrupted. So normal difficulty. This game is known for, like, being crazy, crazy difficult, right? So uh, originally, I was going to go easy, but I decided, you know what? I want to experience this game the way the developers intended, so we're going to go with normal. And then you've got two ways to do experience. So classic XP means that you get experience from killing enemies, completing quests, and utilizing certain skills, the way you usually would in an RPG. Well, they also have the oddity XP system, which means you get experience by collecting oddities that are scattered across Underworld. Now, my uh, understanding is only animals drop oddities. So basically, you've got to explore enough where you're consistently running into these animals and then picking up these oddities after killing them. I also assume it means you need to do more combat as opposed to sneaking around areas or using persuasive methods to try to get through certain places. So it forces you into certain situations. Higher in oddities are found in progressively more dangerous and hard to access areas. No experience is granted for skill usage or killing. Though some oddities are only dropped by creatures. Exactly. So now, uh, slandered. Let me get back to my portrait. Where is my portrait? Oop, here we go. That's my portrait. Instead of the usual kill 100 rats to level up. Yep, exactly. Started using everlasting. <laughs> it's pretty, it was pretty good, actually. Awesome, awesome. Not gonna lie, the audio system sounds like it sucks. I would definitely go for XP. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It might turn out that it sucks. We'll see. No, I think Bill C is okay. Uh, just know the game could be brutal with wrong build. Yep, and it might be brutal for me. So... Uh, we'll find out. Okay, so it has usual strength. Um, not only does strength affect melee damage, though, but it also impacts your ability to use heavier weapons, like the light machine gun, which is what I was going to do at first, but a light machine gun doesn't need will, and I really like the idea of playing as a strong will character. Then, of course, we got dexterity, does usual, locks, thievery, throwing, initiative, blah, blah, blah. Agility is going to affect your ability to dodge certain things, so evasion, initiative, it, it impacts initiative as well. Movement points, constitution does what you expect, and it seems like it also plays into you being able to wear certain armor. Perception also does what you would expect. It helps, I think, with uh, ranged weapons. Yep, it helps with ranged weapons, and you can detect hidden objects, passages, and creatures. So I guess creatures can stealth in Underworld, so... We'll see how that all works out. And then there's will, which of course determines your uh, ability to focus your mind through pain, suggestion, and overwhelming odds. And it's gonna play a big part in our psionic abilities, which we're going to specialize in. Well, boss page, what's going on, man? How are you? You can do it. <laughs> Underwear always retrieve me, never got around to it. It seems interesting. Learned about it, but never played it as well. Yeah, it seems interesting. I don't know anything about it either. This will be my first uh, interaction with it. Though you play nor normal, tend to be forgiving. Jump of the difficulty between normal and hard is enormous. And I feel like hard does feel amazing. Interesting, but we'll always advise starting with norm. Okay, we're starting with norm, and if I decide it's too much and I need to go down to easy, then I'll go down to easy. Like, I'm definitely that type of player. I do what's fun for me. If it ain't fun for me, then I'm lowering that difficulty for sure. Rikoro, what's going on? He's saying, like, hope you enjoy the game. This one has been on my list for a while. Looking forward to watching you check it out. Awesome, awesome. I don't plan probably to do a full stream of this. I'll probably do like one episode, maybe two, get a feel for the game, but it should be fun. should be interesting. Okay, so we're going to dump strength. We're going to dump dexterity. We're going to pump agility up to 10. We're going to dump constitution. We're going to dump perception. We're going to pump will up to 10, and then we're going to get intelligence up to 8. So we're going to be the super smart, psionic, magey type of guy who has no strength, no constitution. And honestly, he's not all that aware. Most especially, he's not self-aware, right? He's just all about his desires, his goals. Now, we're going to do throwing because we're going to have lots and lots of grenades and want to be able to use them. We're going to do dodge and evasion. Really hates to get hit, so very, very good at avoiding getting hit whenever possible. We're going to do lock picking because it's actually a personal pet peeve of mine to not be able to pick locks when I want to. So I definitely, definitely want to have that. 
Um, yeah, hold on. This game has been on my wish list forever. Interesting in your take, Slander. What's going on, Nomics? I've never played it, so this should be very, very interesting. Uh, we're going to do electronics, because I heard crafting is a big, big deal in this game. So it's something that you definitely want to have. Then we're also, and you know, I'm sorry, I should go through some of it. Um, the, the secondary number that you see is because some skills relate to each other. So if you see at the bottom here on the right hand side, it lists synergies. So you can see that heavy guns is going to get, what, I guess 25% or whatever your overall gun score is. So if I bump this up to 15, then, oh no, I'm sorry, I guess it's like 75%. So uh, if I bump this up to 15, you know, heavy guns is going to get nine. So by increasing one thing, you can also, to some degree, increase something else. So you've got guns, which is just regular guns, pistols, shotguns, etc. Then you got heavy guns, uh, which are like light machine guns, rocket launchers, things of that nature. From what Lennon said, heavy guns are not nearly as available in the early game. Uh, you've got to wait until mid or I guess late game before they really become prevalent. So probably not a good idea to start out with those. Throwing is for thrown weapons, of course, and grenades. I love using grenades in turn-based games like this, so definitely plan to make great use of that. Uh, and then, of course, we have crossbows and melee. Seems like there's a lot of melee weapons in this game, but again, we're kind of the weak mage type of guy, so we're not going to go that route. Throwing is good for late game. Oh, that's interesting. That's awesome. And it looks like I'm going the wrong way. Just go through a massive storm for my old cat to sleep. Oh, I'm glad you're able to get through the uh, storm safe, boss page. If you want backseat advice, think about stealth. I, I, I definitely plan to put points in the stealth after this level. That's definitely on the list. Uh, avoiding unnecessary encounters is a big boon in this game. Or positioning yourself before the start of a fight. Okay. I'm the same way. When I was younger, I used to tough it out on normal high, but I'm too old for that. Exactly. I'll happily go down in difficulty. Exactly. That's my feelings exactly. I'm not toughening out no nonsense. Uh, then dodge and evasion does exactly what you would think. So dodge is for melee attacks and then evasion is for ranged attacks. Stealth we just spoke about. Obviously it allows you to stealth around areas. From what I understand, this game handles stealth in a really, really fantastic way um, and makes it a lot of fun to stealth around. So it should be interesting to explore that. And then, of course, there's hacking, which allows you to hack computer device, things of that nature. I don't have any points in this right now, and I am a wee bit concerned about that. I'm wondering if lockpicking by itself will be enough, but we'll see. Pickpocketing is interesting. You know, I always hate pickpocketing in game, to be, on to be honest with you. Even if I'm doing, like, an evil playthrough, I'm, I just never, like pickpocketing people it's always you know what it is that i always feel like i'm gonna have to reload you know i'm gonna get caught trying to pickpocket this person and then have to reload my game again and it just always seems uh, to not really be worth all the trouble so rarely do i focus on pickpocketing and then we're not gonna focus at all on traps even though my understanding is traps are absolutely littered throughout the game but there's supposed to be some glasses you can craft that will basically allow you to uh, see those traps and be able to handle them so we'll see and then there's four different types of ways that you can craft different objects whether it be mechanical electric electronics uh, chemistry biology or tailoring which is for like leather and cloth so we're gonna focus on electronics and hopefully that'll end up being the right um, uh, choice and then for our psi abilities we're going to first go for thought control so this is going to allow us to influence the minds of other living creatures should be very very interesting and then comes psychokinesis which is specifically for mechanical force i don't know how many robots there actually are and then metathermics which is about uh temperature control making things hotter or colder and that's all right but it doesn't sound all that interesting to me but temporal manipulation is about manipulation of time or time perception. That sounds fantastic. So I definitely, definitely, definitely want that. Uh-oh. Uh, we had a massive sudden rainstorm and winds. It was rattling the roof shingles and howling. Whoa! I'm sorry to hear that. A lot of rain it helps me get, but that was too much. <laughs> I'm glad you're back home, though. No, pickpocket works not based on chance here. Oh, nice. Okay. So I might end up getting into it uh, later on. How much you can steal before getting caught? Nice. Okay. Sounds good. 
I might end up picking it up there. I found wild. What's going on, Cosmic? How are you, man? I found a wild private sword with full world building, like Minecraft creator mode. It's in my brain. I love it so much. <laughs> That's awesome. Psychokinesis also means telekinesis. Oh, really? That's interesting. To exact mechanical force as well as to emit electric currents and project electromagnetic fields. It doesn't seem like that's the way they're using it here. Although, it is interesting because to me, when I listen to this description, it almost sounds like you could play as Magneto, which would be freaking awesome. But, we'll see. Alright, and then the last 15 points go into Mercantile. I love being able to get the cheap deals. Alright, sounds good. Uh, hot and cold sounds like fire and ice magic or like ice man. Yep. I agree. I agree um, But I I don't know why I've always been big on controlling time uh, I love the, the doctor who style of play and then after you do all of that You're able to choose two feats at the beginning. So first we have expertise This is all about crossbow melee and bullet base attacks. Obviously that doesn't help us Nimble reduces armor penalty by 15% and grants a 15% bonus to dodge and evasion if your armor penalty is at zero. Obviously, we depend on dodge and evasion, so we're going to pick that up. Ninja Looter is about uh, reducing your time for pickpocketing. We don't pickpocket, so this is not a big deal. Opportunist increases damage against immobilized, stunned, and incapacitated targets by 25%. We're not able to do that kind of stuff yet, so we're going to... We'll skip over that for now. Pack Rat Hound increases carry capacity by 50. If it turns out carry capacity becomes an issue, this is definitely something we'll pick up. Paranoia. Everyone is out to get you and you know it. Detection increased by 20%, initiative by 5, and the chance to get critically hit by weapon and unarmored attacks is reduced by 3%. I absolutely love this and it fits into the type of character that I want to play, so we're going to get this, but not right off the bat. Quick Pockets provides you with an extra utility slot and reduces the action point cost of equipping items during combat by 50%. I don't know the game yet, so I don't know whether or not this is useful, so we'll have to file that away. Recklessness increases your chance to critically hit with weapons and unarmed attacks by 7%, but also increases your chance to get critically hit by those same attacks. Nah, I'm straight. Snooping increases perception by 3 for the purpose of detecting hidden passages and other secrets. I've already kind of dumped perception, so I don't think that's really going to help me. Sure step, you can safely navigate cow traps and puddles of acid. I don't know how prevalent cow traps and puddles of acid are in the game, so I don't know whether or not this is useful. Versatility, your effective guns, heavy guns, crossbows, and melee skill value is increased. We're not using any of that, so that's not helpful. Hit and run, every time you kill an enemy with your melee or ranged weapon, your movement points are reset to 25. Again, that's not going to help us. Uh, power management, electronic devices you craft have 35% greater energy capacity. This sounds something that, like, this sounds like something that will be useful to us, but not quite yet. And then finally, we have sprint. You can activate the sprint ability, which grants you 30 additional movement points for two turns. Only effective while not in stealth. I'll definitely take that. All right. Exert force is telekinesis, essentially. Mm, no stealth? Not yet. Not at the beginning. Temporal manipulation equals quick save and quick load. <laughs> Awesome. James, what's going on, man? How are you? So I missed your intro the stream earlier. How was work? Eh, brutal. <laughs> but it's over. It's all good. Uh, at the end of the day, I'd rather have a brutal Saturday than be without a job. So I don't complain. <laughs> I don't complain when I get those calls. Hey, I'm gainfully employed and I make enough money that I'm keeping the wife happy. There's a whole lot of brothers who can't say the same thing. So you're not going to catch me making an issue of it. It just is what it is. So party people, what are we doing? I have no idea any of this works so or what's happening right now. I'm learning on the go as well, Abandonment. I've never played this game before. We're in character creation. Kyle Trops are borderline OP. Interesting. Okay, so I might have to pick up that uh, feat later on. So many numbers that do not mean anything to me. <laughs> Didn't you pick evasion last time? Um, uh, evasion is a skill, and I have 15 in evasion for sure. Uh, where is the perk to use my brain to levitate? <laughs> Maybe we'll get it down the line to make you uh, really hard to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got evasion and I got, what is it called? I got dodge and evasion. I got both of them. America labor laws or something. <laughs> I'm aware. I got used to it. I'm 65 hours into DD2 and finally found my first Drake. Really? Kill it by backing it into the water, which is something I do in a lot of enemies. 
I've never even thought about that. Wow. Hey, every time I get new Paul, they see me do that. They said, I've never seen that. <laughs> Makes sense to me. How does magic work in this game? Do you start with spells? No clue. We're going to find out. What's going on, LPRPG? How are you? Uh, my agility is 10. I got my agility way, way up there. They are catch you. Okay. Um, so I got slandered. I got the right photo. We got all these points in. All of my skill points are in. It looks like this is correct. Both feats are selected. Let's go ahead and get started. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Last topic, of course. Earthquake reports. Repairs. What's the situation at the South Tunnel? Gotta dig deeper to plant the explosives, or we risk more damage to the tunnel. Almost everyone is working shifts up there. Shouldn't be too long now. He nods. Gorski, how's the security looking? Got one man at the cave exit, and that's enough, as far as I'm concerned. Automated security is strong there, and as long as we know the crossroad and the cove are clear, no one can sneak up on us. Also, got one man at the underpassages, and he's been ordered not to open the gate no matter what. The last thing we need right now are those bloody lurkers sneaking up on us. Everyone else is up at the platform, securing workers and tunnels. Good, good. If no one has anything else to add, that will conclude this council meeting. Actually, just one more thing, in case you weren't informed already. I admitted a new citizen to the station. That slandered fellow? Yes, I think it would be a good addition to the station. He and Vinsel are still at the range, but they should be done any moment now, I believe. You put too much trust in your task tanner. All I care about is how he handles live action, not how many points he got. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Best put him to work immediately. We need all hands on deck right now. Indeed, that is all, Fair Gorski. Haha, <laughs> so I'm new. Interesting. So this is basically where Shadowrun meets Fallout 1 and 2. Could be. <laughs> well, yo, what's going on, Cross? How are you? Watch all your videos. Never watched the stream yet. Hey, welcome. Glad you're able to make one. Hope you enjoy it. So we're playing Underrail today. I've never played this before. I have no idea whether or not it's any good, but if you've been around for a while, you know I play all kinds of CRPGs. This is a classic CRPG that a lot of is a classic CRPG that a lot of people seem to hold in high regard, so I figured I'd give it a try. This sounds kind of like Metro instead of Fallout. Could be. Jason, what's up, dude? Never heard of this game. This looks interesting. Yep, this is my first time playing it. What's going on, Banjo? How are you? An unexpected yawn interrupts Vincel. He instinctively raises his left hand to cover his mouth, forgetting that he is wearing a respirator. A tiny smile creeps up on your face due to this very fact, yet you understand that after so many hours of testing, these kinds of lapses tend to sneak up on people. Excuse me. He picks up where he left off. So all in all, as far as I'm concerned, Slandered, we're done here. I've got a few other things to do, but unless you'd like to have another go at the testing range, you've got no reason to stay here any longer. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd like to give it one more. I never had access to a range like this before, so why not make the most of it while I'm here? His tired eyes aren't exactly radiating with joy at your response, but he still nods. No problem, but know that it won't affect your previous results. I guess it's best we go through the whole procedure as if this is your first time at the range. Okay, I'll now open the gate for you to go through. As before, I'll be watching you through the cameras. We'll continue once you get past the gate. I'm ready. So, okay, first time I was able, red, I assume red means no, oh, makes sense, I'm not able to use this computer or search through his filing cabinet while he's there, alright, okay, so if I move the mouse around, that moves the camera around, good to know, it seems like I cannot open that door, so we'll just go through here, and what is locker, can you hear me, loud and clear, Great. Now pick up your weapons and armor from the cabinet. I think there's also a few EMPs left on the shelf as well. Hmm. Snake! What's up, man? How are you? 
good, mate. Thank you. Awesome. Good to hear, Banjo. I love this tutorial. NPC is like, tutorializing, y'all. Ha <laughs> Indeed. Press tab to highlight all interactable uh, objects, or Z to reverse the order of highlighted objects. Contents of any container can be picked up by either double-clicking them in the container window or dragging them into your inventory, which can be opened in a separate window by pressing I. You can also take press A to take all items from a container. All hotkeys presented in the tutorial are default values can be changed in the options menu. There will be three bots fighting against you, just like the first time. So choose an appropriate weapon and make sure you wear that armor. There was this guy a few years ago who forgot to put his armor on and, well, it didn't end well. Take those bots out. To equip weapons, armor, and utilities, open the inventory and double click on any of those items or drag them into their respective slot. You may have up to two weapons equipped at the same time and you can select the primary weapon by clicking on its icon in the action bar. The left side of the inventory window represents the contents of your belt, and this is where you put your utility items, like grenades or special crossbow bolts. Ring me when you're ready to proceed, or if you have any questions. Understood. All right. And we'll take all that, and shells, and we'll take all that. All right, and then we can ring when ready, and let's see, let's open up inventory. So he said, make sure you put on the armor. Insulated anti-rifle vest. Mechanical, 16%. Cold, 11%. Why is it divided by six and three? What does that mean? This insulated vest carries a ballistic panel made of laminated fabric that has hard, rigid surfaces, value for its high bullet stopping capabilities. Armor penalty, oh, 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 wait. I get more armor for having no armor penalty, though. I don't, you know what, hold on. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do what he says, but long term, pretty sure I'm I'm better off not having um, armor that has such a high penalty. So on one hand, we're going to put this hammerer, which is a pistol, a 7.62 caliber hammerer type handgun. Ignores up to 40% of a target's evasion at close range. Okay, so they like it at close range. Unload all the ammo for the weapon for five action points, okay? And then we also have the Zephyr crossbow. Incurs 125% of mechanical damage resistance and threshold. Uh, it is, they do not like it when you use this at close quarters. Okay, interesting. THP on my love crap. <laughs> I got no, no uh, complaints, Snake. No complaints whatsoever. Just got off a of Guilty Gear. Mmm. Oh, Moonlight, you like Guilty Gear as well? All right, there's that. Do I have to equip ammo or is ammo automatically used? Seems like it's automatically used. Ooh, we also have a sledgehammer. Oh, that's interesting. And then a grenade. All the automatons calling this blast take 30 to 45% damage. Okay. Nothing for the feet, and I think that's it. I understand this game is super hard, so just in case I screw it up right from the beginning, let's just go ahead and save often. Oh, speaking of which, so, okay, so I can, this allows me to click that for the guns, and then this is for the MP grenades. I'll pickpocket. Oh, I do have stealth mode, even though I have very few um, uh, stealth points. Rapidly fires five bullets. Uh, oh, maybe it won't allow me to use burst because I don't have a weapon capable of burst. Is that it? Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Intercom. Ooh, I'm here. Got any combat tips for me? Always be prepared and fight smart. Brute force will only get you so far. You can initiate combat manually by either by pressing enter or clicking the button in the lower right corner of the screen, or when an enemy spots you, hovering over any characters will reveal their name, remaining health and attitude toward the player in the form of a colored name tag. Right clicking will display more info regarding health and active effects at the top of the screen. She's asked about why do I see? <laughs> This game is so brutal and unforgiving, it's awesome. What's going on, Abyss? It's my first time with the game, so it should be interesting. This is where I like me in my head. <laughs> it seems like this is uh, supposed to be inspired by Fallout, Snake. 
but I never played Fallout 1 or 2, so I can't tell you how similar they are. Plus, I've just started, so even if I had played those games, I wouldn't be able to tell you. No, it's nothing like Fallout. There you go, Abyss seems to know. Uh, so you can press Enter. Uh, right click and display more info regarding health. Okay, cool. Combat in Underrail is turn-based, which means that different characters take turns at performing their actions. Every time combat begins, whoever has the highest initiative will get to act first. The initiative stat has a base value, which can be influenced by both agility and dexterity. However, should the player manually initiate combat, the player will always be the one to move first. When combat begins, an action point bar will appear in the lower right corner, which can be used for the duration of the player's turn. Movement points are colored yellow, can be used for movement only. Action points are colored green, and can be used for attacking, using inventory items, interacting with game world objects, etc. And if the movement points have been exhausted, can be used for moving as well. Interesting. Uh, hey, Vincel, what weapons should I use against bots? Technically, you can use whatever you feel suits you the best, but as you know, bots in general are pretty well armored. Knives might work if you want to slash rat hound, but against bots, you better use something like high caliber or armor piston bullets, explosives, or even sledgehammers rather than, say, JHP rounds and bolts. Those ain't gonna work as well. Now, EMP weapons are best if you want to do some serious damage or even short circuit bots. Those don't work so well against living enemies unless you want to drain someone's energy shield, for example. And what about armor? Well, Armor is good for you. <laughs> when it comes to armor, there's always a trade-off between protection and mobility. For example, wearing metal armor makes you less agile but offers more protection. While with, say, leather armor, you get the opposite. Less protection but more mobility. Of course, there's more to armor than just those two extremes, but you get the general idea. I hope. I placed a tactical vest in the locker, which works good against bullets, and that's what you'll need right now. Anything else? What are some effective ways for me to temporarily disable my enemies? There's loads of ways one can deal with his opponent. Some you can incapacitate by flashbangs, other you can stun with electrical weapons. While both stun and incapacitation are disabling effects that present a target, prevent a target from performing any action, they are not the same. Incapacitation effect breaks the line of sight between the player and the target, allowing for stealthy easier escape or repositioning, but can be removed by any attack. Stun, on the other hand, cannot be removed in almost all cases, but stunned enemies do retain the line of sight and will chase the player once the stun effect wears off. Ooh. You can use traps, or if you're good with psionics, you can even mess with people's heads. Just remember that what you can do to others, they can also do to you. Hmm, interesting. I thought it looked cool, then I found a bad sort of bad. <laughs> For you, it's pretty good. Don't forget to like. Oh, thank you, Moonlight. Yeah, if you all are enjoying the stream, please uh, go ahead and like and help out the channel. I really appreciate it. I wonder if there's a CRPG with, with lowest initiative goals first. Uh, good question. I'm not sure. I am Braille. What's going on, man? Fan of Underrail? This is my first time playing the game. I mean, like, armor is pretty well balanced. It doesn't reduce your movement at all. In fact, Using super heavy armor that would make you slow would make absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. At least in today's time. In medieval times, it did slow you down, though, right? Um, what? How do... Oh, wait, wait. Other disabling effects can prevent enemies from moving, slow them down, and more. Many human enemies will have similar tools at their own disposal. So learning about all these effects not only helps you use them, but figure out ways to defend from them. Hmm. How do I hold the weapon? He laughs. That's a good one. To equip weapons, armor, and utilities open. Okay, we already went through that. How do I use my weapons and devices more effectively? Keep important items where they're easy to access. The lower part of the screen contains the action bar. The left segment of the bar is where you can drag items and abilities for easier use. Certain items can be dragged from the inventory, while abilities and special attacks can be dragged from the quick invoker, which can be opened by pressing F or clicking its icon on the action bar. 
The action bar also displays which of the weapons you have equipped is the primary one and can be seen in the player model's hands. Weapons can be switched by clicking on them or pressing X for no cost of action points. The right segment of the action bar contains belt items. This is where grenades, special bolts, and other utilities are displayed. The number of slots can be increased by equipping different belts and or having certain feats. Lastly, just above the action bar is the experience bar, which displays how much experience you have gained and how much more you need to level up. Cause, you know, digging through your bag to find that health hypo you urgently need is not the smartest way to go about it, slandered. Hmm. How do I reload my weapon? Really? If you are using a weapon which has ammo or needs to be charged, an ammo energy counter will appear above the action bar and will display remaining ammo energy. To reload your primary firearm, hold shift to display all appropriate ammo types you can use with the weapon and click on the desire, desire ammo. Really? So ammo is a big deal in this game. That's interesting. The enemy eye uses their ability smartly. Uh, from everything I've heard, this game is very difficult, so I don't think that's a, a problem. The setting is more comparable to Necromunda than the Fallout if you compare with Gritty Grim Dark Sci-Fi but the level of depth of skill min-maxing one of strengths and raised weaknesses. Oh, you feel like it's a weakness as well? Not significant. There are videos of dudes doing cartwheels and parkour and full plate mail. Really? Oh, wow. I had always assumed it slowed them down. Uh, yes, there are many armors in Medieval that slowed you down a lot and then they overcame that weakness by nights and so on. That took a while though. No, medieval plate armor, particularly later, articulated plate uh, limit, barely limited mobility. At most, you couldn't stick your hand straight up. Otherwise, the weight was mostly evenly distributed. Damn. Okay. Did not know that for sure. Okay. You can also reload directly from inventory. Right-click the ammo type you want to use in the radio menu to select the desired option. Then left-click on the weapon you want to load. A weapon can also be unloaded which is done by simply right-clicking it while it is in your inventory. Huh. Crossbows do not need to be reloaded because they use bolts directly from the inventory. Special bolts, however, need to be placed in utility slots before they can be used. Energy weapons are charged in a similar fashion in firearms, with the exception that they cannot be unloaded. Look, I'm tired and can't tell if you're joking or if you're being serious. <laughs> that will be all for now. I'll ring you if I have more questions. All right. That's all interesting is F5 save, let's say, okay, uh, are these special bolts? This is a standard crossbow uh, belt, so I don't need, yeah, that doesn't need to go here, and that's standard round, so yeah, I don't need to do anything special with those, so let's just go out. I'm ready, open the gate. Whoa, okay. Uh, now if I, ooh, why does it say 23%? Oh, uh, oh, oh, maybe I'm not close enough? Okay, here, I'm, well, I actually don't want to be any closer. So, directly in front of me, I get two of them. It, it, okay, so you know what, here, I'll come up, I'll come up one space. circuited two of them. Are they saying that uh, I barely... Oh. Oh, wow. There's, I didn't even uh, realize that there's a cool down for the turns. Okay. Um, so this is my primary weapon. I'm not going to use the crossbow bolts because my understanding is they're not good for this. So, hold on. They see him that I've got 11 movement points. I got 35 action points. These points can be used to perform an action or for movement if they're you carry. Okay. Why is it? Why does it seem like it's not allowing me to? It's temporarily disabled. It cannot perform any functions. That's nice. So it seems like. 
Oh, it did take damage. Altars also have their electronic. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Why does it seem like I can't? It's not letting me attack. Action points 50. Range 10. How many action points do I have left? Oh, I've only got 35. Good lord. It takes 50 action points for you to do this, but attacks the target with the currently equipped weapon, right? Okay, so, oh, it only is going to allow me to attack with that crossbow. Why won't it let me attack with my pistol? That's interesting. And then, okay. But I swear they were saying that, um... Crossbow bolt damage is going to do virtually nothing. Hmm. Yeah, this video's in full play doing a spin against the opponent that I want to press even Geralt. Oh, wow. <laughs> Living this world of underground, discovering and covering the world is what makes the game truly shine. Yeah, my understanding is that the writing is absolutely fantastic. Okay. Um, seems like that's all it's going to let me do. Okay. I'm disturbed that it won't let me. I'm almost wondering did I screw something up? Was I supposed to. Oh, wait. Is it saying that... Oh, here we go. Yeah, it says... It says 20. So it should have... It should have 20 bullets, but it doesn't let me... And I've got 60 action points. I should be able to use this first attack, but I can't. I'm sure this is something I'm doing. I'm just trying to understand what it is that I'm doing, but it's fine. All right. What is that? What is that out of my clip? I usually go for melee builds in these games because ammo is so scarce early on. Yeah, that might have been the move. But right now, I just want to know in general. Here we go. Okay. Why won't it let? It won't let me do two. All right, fine. I am barely doing anything to these, and it's because I'm not supposed to be using crossbow bolts. I'm supposed to be using the pistol. Why does it feel, I feel like there must be something I'm doing wrong. <laughs> magazine capacity is 16. If the magazine only had, okay, so wait a minute. It takes 20 action points to use this. I've got 35 action points and I have bullets. And it won't, and it's equipped in a in a uh, in my hand. R for reload. But I'm pressing R. Doesn't do anything. And let's see. Let me see something else. So this this looks colored in. So it looks like they have all the, their bolts. It almost looks like it, it doesn't have the gun doesn't have ammo. So, hold on, let me make sure that that is still control. Reload, reload. Swap weapon. Oh, wait. Key binding, yeah, this should be it. Recharge, swap, reverse. Why am I not seeing reload? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Recharge shield, toggle energy shield, swap weapon, quick button, action button, quick load. Did you equip your pistol? Do you have ammo? Yeah. My pistol is in my hand. The ammo is right here. It doesn't allow me to put the ammo in my belt, in my, in my belt slot. So, but when I look, but when I look at it right here, it looks like it's not colored in, as if the pistol does not have ammo. So, if that's the case, if I'm clicking on it, so it's the weapon I'm using right now, if I press R, I assume it will reload, but that's not happening. Ah, uh, so irritating. 
Let me get this game another spin. Got about halfway through it. What's going on now? How are you? You might not have enough stamina due to using other skills. So you need stamina in order to be able to shoot a pistol? Based action points 20. Knows up to 40% of the target's evasion. Durability can be assembled. It's got a certain amount of weight. Uh, you are correct. Your pistol is not loaded. Right. So I should be able to press R to reload it. But it's not. It's not loading. And I don't understand why. What's going on, John? Look at your right side of the screen. Your stamina points are used up. When you say stamina, are you referring? There's. You need to right click your gun to reload. I, I right clicked on it and nothing's happening. If I go on the menu and I right click on it, nothing's happening. Movement points, these. What are you saying when you refer to stamina points? Because I see movement points and I see action points. I've got 35 action points and 24 movement points. And I assume 35 action points should be enough to reload this weapon. Unload all ammo from weapon. Every action costs points, but you lack the points, so you need to pass your turn. Okay, you know what? Here. I'm going to pass this turn. Save 10 action points. All right, now we're back. I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do, right click on this. It's not doing anything. Press R. It's not doing anything. Go in here. Right click. It's not doing anything. What is this? Quick and wait utility from inventory during combat call slots. Yeah, that's fine. Press an R again. Not doing anything. It is not allowing me to reload. If I press 1 to uh, be able to uh, shoot, not doing anything. 2, not doing anything. Try right clicking the ammo. Right click the ammo. This is reload current weapon. Reload weapon. Okay. What the hell? Why, why was that necessary? That's so odd. Okay. Thank you. That's some degree of progress. The tutorial mentioned selling bullet type. With it. Yeah. Yellow is for moving only. Yep. Action and stamina points share the same bar. Got you. Uh, all right. So now I could do a regular attack. That's some degree of progress. But now it won't let me do a burst. Oh, wait. That's 50. So that's 50 action points. I don't have enough action points for a burst, but I have enough for just a regular old attack. So let's see what happens with this. All right. That's 11. Good Lord. This, it feels like it's going to take me forever to deal with these guys. All right. And I think, was that, um, here's the other question. So EMP did a crazy amount of damage. And then the bolts were doing 15 mechanical and then 12 mechanical. The gun, oh, the last one did 19 mechanical. So yeah, I think I am supposed to go with pistol. All right. Um, all right. I still got plenty of health. Feels like it's almost going to be an endurance trial. Wait a minute. Why don't I have 50 action points now? I've got 55 action points. Why won't it let me use the first attack? Rapidly fires five bullets with reduced precision. This attack also has a chance to miss the primary target, possibly hitting other characters in the line of fire instead. This chance increases with range. It's an unconditional special attack. And it has, you have to be with a range of 10. I assume... Range 10 means 10 squares, right? So I've got two characters within two squares. A burst attack would be useful, but it's not allowed letting me do it. So interesting. There is a reload skill you could attach to your bar. You need to add it to your action bar. Okay, I'll do that after this. Why the latest episodes of Invincible? I'm waiting for the whole season to come out and then I'll watch it. Robots have goo armor. Gonna need to use your pulse grenades when they come off cooldown. Got you. Well, but I, I like the late 90s, early 2000s computer game style this has. Yeah, it's, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, Biz, I didn't get to choose these weapons. I got to <laughs> work with what I got. Did the first one... Um, 
Oh, I missed my first attack. That's unfortunate. And then that is it. Isn't that nice? Zero. Critical hit. So really, we're just uh, using the pistol in between waiting for the grenades to be back available. While also praying that none of these bots hurt, hurt us. This is not a good start to this game. I don't know. I think this is... Because uh, I got to do this three times, right? Oh, wait a minute. I think the pulse grenades are available again. I should have used that. All right. Let's do this again. Let's... Uh, yeah, let's get all three of them this time. Awesome. Right, see, so they all uh, still have their health, too. Wait, I almost wonder, too. Hold on. This guy has 877 health. Yeah, it's your, you got a thousand, so there was no... It didn't matter who I started with. Okay, fine. You can take that off. I don't want any more. Um... At this rate, I'm probably going to run out of uh, ammo way before. Press space bar, come on. What's the problem? Into the turn-based comp. What? Oh, I guess because all of them were stunned, it just took me out of combat? What's going on, man? How are you? Invincible is a um, is a anime show on Amazon Prime. Pistol can't burst. It's on the default things on your hotbar. It's got to be an SMG or assault rifle. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yep, I'm doing good, Nick. I got no complaints, man. Hope you can say the same. Yeah, it, it's all good. Games get, got a steep learning curve, but it's worth it when you see some of the stuff the game has to offer. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing it then. It's pretty much the story or two. This reminds me of Shadowrun. Yeah, I really enjoy the old Shadowrun games. Uh, it's not really an encounter, um, uh, GM. This is the actually the tutorial section. So, believe it or not, I'm just getting started. <laughs> Whoa, didn't do anything to him. Okay. And I don't have a choice but to just get out of that. All right. Yeah, weird. When they're all stunned, um, and you skip your turn, it forces you out of combat, which I find odd. All right, so I, I've shot twice, right? All, uh, and now I don't have anything enough action points to do anything else. So obviously I'm going to pass my turn, which would usually cause them to go ahead and act. But they're all stunned. Now you would think that the game would cycle through their turn, say they can't do anything, and then just let me do my turn, right? But instead, when I press spacebar to end my turn, it pulls me out of combat. And then there's a cooldown for when I can get back into combat again. That's a very odd system. All right. I'm sure there's a reasoning behind that that I'm just not uh, picking up yet because it's the first time I'm playing the game. Oh, I don't have to be in combat to shoot them. That's what it is. So when it pulls me out of combat, I could just go ballistic while they're all stunned. Well, this makes a whole lot more sense now. Now I can go back into turn base while I reload. By the way, I'm going to run out of bullets. Why is it letting me reload now? What's the problem? It's not letting me click on it right now. Oh, do I not have enough action points? No, I got 50 action points. Uh, 
Man, the Australian is great, great. What's going on, Apollo? How are you, man? A uh, fan of Under Rail? That's awesome. And no way 20 bullets will kill any of them. Shift Q or press Shift to see your ammo. Unloads all ammo from the weapon. Oh, okay, nice. Thank you. So wait, if I do that, why isn't it? Oh wait, component. It's the empty case, it's just a component. So it's saying that I'm out of bullets now. Oh, so wait, you can walk past them. You're supposed to stun them in the tutorial. You pass the combat test. Oh, so I don't have to, um, I don't have to destroy them. Well, isn't that interesting? How long, is, how much longer are these guys gonna stay? It, it would suck if they <laughs> got unstunned as soon as uh, I went over there. So yeah, let's do that first. All right, and then. Good job, Slim. Now I want you to pick up the items from that locker. There should be a battery, a hacksaw, and two lockpicks inside. Oh, that's interesting. I, I automatically assumed I was supposed to wipe them out. I'm so used to that. <laughs> Ian, what's going on, dude? How are you, man? Abandonment, I got a few builds on the uh, channel that you could probably take a look at, see if one of them will work for you. I don't think any of them are Warlock Cleric, though. Reload? All right, reload. Well, I need ammo to reload. I don't have any ammo right now. Peons, use the lockpick to unlock the door. The next room, you have to unlock the footlocker as well as that box before I let you through. By left-clicking a locked object, the skill necessary to unlock that particular type of lock will be displayed above it. To open mechanical locks, you will need high enough lockpicking skills. For electronic, high enough hacking skill. Using a lockpick can be done either from the inventory or more easily from the action bar. In the first case, right-click a uh, lockpick and then left-click an object you want to unlock. While in the second, drag the lockpick into the action bar slot, select it, and then use it on an object. Hmm. Oh, and yeah, the container has an electronic lock, so charge your hacksaw first if you want to open that thing. Using a hacksaw is similar to using a lockpick, with the exception that it needs to be charged first. You can use any battery to charge it. Simply right-click a battery, select Recharge Item from the radio menu, and then left-click the item you want to charge. Hmm. Vincel, how do I unlock things? Is that what he just mentioned? Okay, yeah, that's what he went through. I'll be off for now. I'll ring you if I have more questions. All right. So we've got an intercom. We've got the locker. So hack sword tool, no energy, lock pick, and a lithium cell. I'll take all that. And then bring you down here. And then you recharge object. What's the other option? Recharge item. There's a large energy storage object with wait, what? That's insane. Recharge current weapon. Okay. Recharge an item. What is the problem? Double click it apparently. What's the problem? Oh, is it out? Recharge an item with 30 uh, energy. Recharge the current base with 30 energy. Oh, and maybe that's all it is. How do you tell? Hmm. I wonder how you're supposed to be able to tell that it's on empty, but whatever. All right. Uh huh huh huh. So if I use this here, lock picking gives me a meter. Oh, uh, hold on. Lock picking disabled. Lock oh, lock disabled successfully. Excellent. All right. Now did that and 
man, did he give me any more ammo? He did not. I got crossbow bolts, that's about it, so I might as well switch over to that. But you know, he will be, uh, uh, you wasted all your ammo. I did. What to rebuild the city box every time a guy turns up whatever a tutorial. <laughs> Good boy. Wait. Yeah, I, I'm actually looking forward to using some of those class mods to see what are some of the options I've never uh, done before. You can't see with your item menu open, but the pause can recharge is because there's an animation. Oh, okay. Cling on without prevalent psionics are in BG3 as well to be the Amber and Mind Soul Knight. Psy Warrior are in the game. Hmm. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. And we've got a foot locker. Lock. Foot locker requires lock picking, no problem. Lock disabled. And there's nothing in it. Ooh, except I just lost my lock pick. Ah, oh, damn. That's unfortunate. And I think you said the box is uh, going to need to be hacked, right? Lock disabled. And the box is empty as well. Good, good. Now for the final room. Here you've got one sentry bot and a camera. Try to stick around the bot if you can. This one will not shut down after one hit, just to let you know. You can enter stealth mode both in and out of combat, but only if no one can see you while you're activating it. While in stealth mode, all characters, friend or foe, will display an icon above their heads, which indicates whether they can see you or suspect that you are sneaking around. Your skill, proximity to a character, illumination, and even whether you're in front or behind it all determine how well you remain hidden. Suffering a hit while in stealth mode will instantly reveal you, as will bumping into any characters. By the way, the camera can see you no matter how good you think you're hiding, so it'd be best if you are able to avoid its line of sight completely. Stealth offers many eye advantages. You can pick how and when you initiate combat or even avoid it altogether, which can completely change the outcome of an encounter. Also, certain abilities work only when you are in stealth and can be used to cause massive damage on unsuspecting targets. For instance, sound plays an important role in Underrail, since loud sounds can attract characters to investigate what is going on. Using quiet weapons like crossbows or knives is a good way to make sure a silent assassin remains truly silent. Hmm. The tactical vest might not be the most appropriate thing for sneaking, but it'll do for now. Of course, there are drawbacks too, most important of which is the armor penalty. Wearing heavy armor can severely reduce your effective stealth skill or even downright make it useless. So being aware of what gear you use is crucial. Okay. That's all. Alright, so this is where I guess I'm going to have to sneak through. Let's have five it. Did you choose Oddity or Classic? Ah, uh, Oddity. Uh, I wanted to play the, the game the, the way I suppose it's meant to be played. So, you're in a stealth mode, which allows you to hide from others by reducing your move by 45%. Uh, well, stealth mode will immediately drain all your remaining action and movement points. While in combat, your movement points reduce to zero and you receive no extra movement points from any source. Most hostile actions will immediately remove your stealth, so...
Oh. You gotta be kidding me. Shadow Star, what's going on? Finished driving two already. Must have been a short game. Nah, nah, I didn't finish it, but I needed a, a change up. Sorry, y'all, wasn't paying attention. Okay, well, I guess to focus on a single weapon play style and focus on other points on other stuff like lock picking and our hacking. I'm actually focusing on psionics, so. snap oh, that's not the camera one of the cameras I'm supposed to be avoiding okay fine why does it have him in red well done slander I hope you're satisfied now he yawns Wow, all right, a lot going on in this game. Mm. You also like storytellers, so I advise some points of persuasion, but that's a given. I didn't put any points of persuasion to start with, but I might put in some now. I had a different idea about what my character was gonna be like at first, but uh, uh, now I'm probably gonna end up switching that up. Yeah, cave wizards forever. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Yep, it doesn't matter if the camera sees you. Craft is pretty OP in this game. Yeah, so I got points in electronics. I'm planning to do some electronics crafting. Craft is pretty OP in this game, but it takes like a third of your playthrough to even get it going. Mmm. Music is oddly soothing. Cause sleep to this. <laughs> Will my performance on this run affect my overall results? Nope. I'm done here. It's time to check out my new room. I have no doubt you'll like it. I've yet to see any newcomers complain. <laughs> he laughs. Nothing more to say than congratulations again, Slander. And welcome to Southgate Station. Go and get some rest. See you around, then, sir. All right, tutorial finished. Feel like I should have gotten an achievement for that. Ah, oh, they took all my stuff away. Uh, 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 okay. Yep, nothing in my inventory either. All right. Ooh, game begins. Do, 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 do. Hey, my... Oh, I got a foot locker. What's in here? Absolutely nothing. What is this? Broken pixel. This colorful mosaic, mosaic doesn't seem to represent anything in particular. There's a lock over there. We'll get that in a minute. Nothing over here. Do, do, do. Shelves. Nothing on the shelves. Desk. Compass. Seems to get turned around the tunnels of Underrail. You'll probably need this. Oh, I think I read something about there's no map in this game. Like, you always have to have your own sense of direction or something like that. Rhythm type skills are important in most of these games. Yep. What's going on, Cole? How are you, man? You don't get to keep your equipment for the tutorial, FYI, so using all your ammo doesn't matter. Nice. Wait, why they rob you blind? <laughs> All right, so I got a compass now. The red needle points to the north, okay. Then I've got uh, 200 credits. It's weird that it says its value is 2,000, but okay. So maybe each SGS credit is worth 10 of other types of credits. And then private quarters key card. Okay, so there's the key to my room. Sounds like something I'm gonna need. Uh, then I have my personal, ooh. Oh, there's a light switch. Hey, hey. The Hanged Rat. What could it mean? Okay. All 
right, this seems like the kind of game where you got to scan over carefully, make sure you don't miss anything. What's on my personal computer? Security scope, slander, personal, access level, full, personal messages, new personal messages, two, read message, key card, wing, title, key card, author, wing, hi, I fixed your door, so the key card should work fine now. In case you haven't found it yet, it's in your desk. See you around. Read message, welcome from Tanner. I wonder what happens if you left your key card behind, walked out the door, couldn't get back in, and then went and talked with Wayne. I wonder if he would give you another one. Interesting. That's it. No map. It's why I quit the game. <laughs> I don't I don't blame you, Dale. Again, again, I plan to stream this once, maybe at the most twice. But I feel like this probably isn't a good streaming game. Like, it's probably a game I should play. But it, 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 it might not be all that much fun to watch as opposed to like a Baldur's Gate 3 or whatever. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. There it goes. There's a map. There wasn't one when it first came out. Oh, nice. Okay. Look at that. I get the advantage of some of the additions. You make the map as you play. Makes sense. Okay. Welcome from Tanner. Title, welcome. Author, Tanner. Congratulations, you have passed all the tests we presented you in the past weeks and have now obtained full citizenship in Southgate Station. On behalf of the entire community, I welcome you into our fold. Visit me in my office in the Commons as soon as you've rested so we can discuss your duties in the coming days. How do I find your office? You didn't tell me where it is, but okay. All right, got that, got that. Turn that light on. Uh, this is another blue switch. This, yep, yeah, this is another light. Hey, look at that. That's light on. This locker. What is that? Health hypo. A hypo filled with blood and enzymes. I'm injecting blood into myself. Good lord. That catalyze a rapid regenerative process. Double check your blood type before use. <laughs> Well, it's not telling me what uh, blood type this is, so I'm gonna just go on. Uh, uh, I I'm gonna just assume that I'll be able to use it. Let's see, it costs 10 action points to use this and has a cooldown of six turns. Bandages can be used to treat light wounds. Use restores 140 health points over seven seconds, but the health must be over 40% in order for bandages to be effective. Oh, that's what they mean when they say light wounds. All right, we're gonna take all that. And we're gonna put that on the quick menu because you never know when you're gonna need to bandage yourself up or inject some blood in yourself, apparently. All right, now we also have a mechanical repair. Quick can be used to repair mechanical pieces of gear, such as firearms, mainly weapons and metal armor. Interesting, might not get much use out of that. Patching kit can be used to patch leather armors and tactical vests. Might definitely get use out of that. Glare, an essential tool when venturing into the depths of the underrail, lights up an area for 30 seconds and immediately reveals any stealth enemies when it lands. That could be very, very useful. I get the feeling that there are a lot of uh, enemies in this game who use stealth. All right. Rat Hound Leather Armor. It's got armor penalty of 10%. Now we got a way of dealing with this. What is, how does that thing work again? How do I see my, whatever that mine thing is, I can't do it, there we go. What is this again? Reduces armor penalty by 15%. Okay, so if the armor penalty is 15% or less, we can use it. And this decreases persuasion by three. Why is that? This armor is made of rat hound leather. No matter how hard you try to wash it out, the faint stench of this filthy creature remains. Okay, so it's literally made of rats and that's why people don't like talking to me while I'm wearing it. But it gives me good protection, so I'm gonna wear it anyway. And it should not impact my uh, evasion at all. Now, does this need to be equipped in any sort of way? No, it seems like you could just put it on quick use uh, menu. Okay, cool, that's fine. And yeah, all right, and look, my character looks a little bit different. Nice, okay. And I think that's all we need to do in here, right? Uh, it's a cool game. Getting some decent uh, uh, viewer numbers. <laughs> nice. Um, shelves. Take all. Nothing. That comes that. All right. Ooh, red. Oh, and there's a camera right there. 
I need some light. Where, where's the light at? There we go. All right. So there's a camera right here that I assume won't like if it sees me trying to pick this lock. And it takes time to pick a lock, so we're going to have to let that go for now. What about down here? Is there a camera over here? There's a camera over here. How do you know... One ask, I wonder, can it see me all the way over here? I wish it had like some sort of bubble or something that made it clear, hey, this is the range. Oh, wait a minute, though. This doesn't even have red on it. Uh, locked. Here. Uh, oh, you know what? It wouldn't matter anyway. I don't have any lock picks. <laughs> Dog it. All right. We start at the beginning of the game, y'all. We'll get there. We'll get there. What is that? I saw something creeping out from over there. What was that? All right. Uh, is this this is not locked. What is, what's up with this? Light switch. Mirror. Bathroom. Sink. Shower stalls. Doesn't look like there's anything there that I can click on. All right. But it's good to know that this is here. I assume it's supposed to be men's and women's. I don't know how you know which one's men, which one's women, but okay. We're just going to walk up in here like we own the place. And walk straight out. Now, thank you for the $2 donation, man. Appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the content. Oh boy, oh boy, how's this going so far? Smokey, what's going on? We're just getting started. Tutorial was a little bumpy for a while there, but I'm learning my way around this game. <laughs> I'm just here to see if I can keep track with a death counter. <laughs> I've heard that's kind of the uh, name of the game with, with this, right? That death should be expected, and you just got to retry things and figure out different ways to do them until you can get through the game without being obliterated. Red means you'll get in trouble if caught messing with it. Okay, interesting. This game have cannibal cyborgs or cyborg cannibals. <laughs> oh, it has both? Oh, nice. Uh, red call mess with it. Oh, this is an elevator. All right. Let's see anything over here. Looks like no. Let's take the elevator. Whoa! Nine floors. All right. We're definitely not going into any caves. Hmm. Where am I? Am I on level one? Administration library, engineering science. Yeah, I have some. Hold on. Let's see. Is that where I'm at? No, I'm not on level one. And level one, ooh. Oh, that might be like the way out. All right, well, let's see if I end up catching a beat down out here. Nothing there. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Who are you? Essie. A willowy woman removes her respirator and exhibits the smile underneath. You remember talking to her the first time you came here. But for some reason, her name eludes you at the moment. Is she even mentioned it at all? Her light soprano voice is quick to remind you, though. Hi, Slandered. Remember me? Essie. Of course. Essie. How could I forget you? How's it going? Good. Well, you've been admitted to the station, so I reckon it can't be bad, right? Right? So, you need some help? Directions, to be a bit more specific? Yes. I was hoping you could tell me how to get somewhere. Sure, where are you headed? Never mind, I just remembered I have to do something else first. Take care, and watch out once you're past the perimeter. There are a lot of dangers lurking about. Okay, yeah, I think this is uh, probably the last place you're supposed to go, like, to, um, get your way out. Um, notes, this journal? Talk to Counselor Tanner in his office in the comments, level three. Oh, so let's go to level three first. My bad. Hey, you know what? Okay, here, first let's go to level three. Commons and Cantina. That's interesting. That's where the leader is. So far, zero deaths. Yes, reload save game is going to be your best friend. <laughs> nice. Remember to always check your journal for directions. Okay, yep, I did. So much paid to Shadowrun. I know in Shadowrun, the magic infused in the world has already changed a bunch of people's biology. Mm -hmm. What's this? Oh, this is the oddities. I don't have any of those. Oh, global map. Oh, look at that. Look. This doesn't look all that useful, but okay. <laughs> Shift left click to manage custom notes. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Here, hold on. 
Can I zoom in? No, I can't zoom in. And nope, it doesn't let me do that either. No, center on player. Follow player. Okay, wow. Oh, uh, crafting, inventory. All right, interesting, 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 interesting. Shelves. And shelves. Come on now, what's up with all the empty shelves? Give me something useful now. Damn, this is actually kind of a big floor. All right, um, let's go in here. Ooh, wow. Okay, here, hold on. Let's talk to, let's find this leader guy first, and then we'll come back and talk to everybody. And I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna take a guess that you're the guy in the office. Hey, in fact, I remember you. Oh, you won't let me click on your desk, huh? Why? Why? Why won't you let me search your stuff? I, I'm here now. I'm one of you guys. Come on now. Give me some good stuff. Um, won't let me do any of that. Fine. Hmm. Martin, what's going on, man? How are you? I really wish we got another Shadowrun game. Maybe Larry can make one one day. I, actually, I think Hairbrain Screams might make one. Now that they uh, unshackled from Paradox, they might go back to what they know. I don't think the studio closed down. The man behind the desk is Hadrian Tanner, the counselor who admitted you into Southgate Station. Even during your first encounter with him, he struck you as an unusual looking individual. Setting aside his impressive stature, one finds it difficult not to notice how his thick, bushy hair and beard envelop most of his head. That, in addition to his opaque glasses covering his eyes, which you've never noticed him without, means you can see very little of his face and its expression. His somewhat dirty scavenger outfit, which he wore earlier as well, clashes with the clean, finely furnished office, suggesting that Tanner probably does most of his work in the field. As soon as he finishes typing, he raises his head and reaches out to shake your hand. His big hand, tucked into dark brown gloves, makes yours seem like that of a child in comparison, and you especially feel his large fingers to be twice as thick as yours. His deep voice feels distant and calming when he addresses you. Congratulations once again, Slander, and welcome to our small community. You scored very well on our test. No small feat that. I'm sure you'll turn out to be a valuable and respected citizen. But more importantly, I hope you'll find peace and kinship here, which are so hard to come by in the chaos surrounding us. I have yet to get to know other South Gators, but I have a good feeling I'll fit in with the rest of the crowd pretty well. He nods. I believe so, too. People from many different backgrounds reside in this station. Whatever your interests may be, I'm sure you'll find someone who shares them here. I hope the earthquake didn't disturb you much, and you were able to rest a bit from all the testing, for you have much work to do today. Events have transpired that require your attention. Are you ready for some field work? How much damage did the earthquake cause? Not much damage to the station itself. There were no casualties, fortunately. Regardless, the railroad tunnel has caved in, so we're cut off until the rubble has been cleared up. It is nothing that you should be concerning yourself with at this point in time. Now, back to the business at hand. First, you can have your weapon back. Lucas at the armory should have it. And while you're there, you might want to drop by the shooting range. Since you'll have to do some field work today, it might not be a bad idea to warm up in case things get ugly. Speak to Gorski if he's there. He'll help you set up for some practice sessions. However, that is entirely up to you. Understood. And what is this field work you mentioned? Down in the tunnels below our station, just to the north of Crossroad Caves, lies a series of abandoned outposts. These outposts were built by another station a long while ago for the purpose of scouting and defense. In time, they fell to decay. I want you to retake them so that they might once again serve the same purpose. However, in order to do so, you will need to activate the main power generator that's located inside one of them. Harold from the engineering sector thinks he knows how to get the generation generator operational, so he should be your first stop after we are done here. As far as I am aware, there are a total of five outposts plus the one with the generator. I don't know if it's possible to activate all of them, but try to activate at least three. You may also want to talk to Jonas at the Crossroad Watch Post. It's down the tunnels just outside the station. You'll be passing through there anyway. He's one of our most experienced scavengers, and he's probably seen more of the South Underrail than any of us here. He'll surely have some useful advice for you. 
How well is this? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's not start off with that. Like, we'll, we'll start off by asking other questions. A Larian shuttle run, shuttle run game would be dope. Absolutely. But I seriously doubt they broke away from D&D to start doing games for Shadowrun. <laughs> Great. That's awesome, Martin. Glad to hear it, dude. Found my friend through BG3 for the first time. He's freaking at us. <laughs> like people from many different backgrounds. Why are we retaking these outposts? It is an important strategic position should certain factions attempt to encroach further into our zone of control. Besides, cleaning them out will also push some of the unwanted wildlife further away from SGS, so it is also beneficial in that regard. Wildlife. I understand that a few packs of rat hounds moved into the area, but you best talk to Jonas regarding that. He'll have more details. He knows that area inside out. All right, I'll be on. Oh, and one more thing before you go. Pascal, our station's chief physician, wanted to see you, so you should probably pop down to his office in the medical sector when you have the time. Got it. See you later. All right. Got my first quest. Man, that's what I can click over there. I can go into here, though. Anything I can... Oh, here. There's some light. Man, so it seems like light is a big deal in this game. Hopper meat. Cave hopper meat should not be consumed raw. It's much tastier in the form of a cooked meal. All right. Well. Because I'm also going to steal. Looks like. Boop, boop, boop. Shells. What's here? Nothing. 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 Yeah, more likely to go back to their own device. Yep, they're gonna go back to Divinity, most likely. Ooh, I can close this. You all can't see me, right? So then, Rat How Barbecue, grilled Rat How Meat. Rat Meat, the red meat tastes decently, but the foul creature still smells terrible even when cooked. When consumed, increases strength by one. Consuming food will remove effects of previous meals. Mushroom Salad. A bowl of mushroom salad contains various types of mushrooms dressed with poppy oil. When consumed, increases perception by one. I will take both of these. And looks like I am not punished for it. Excellent. So nothing that just automatic. Ooh, consumed increases all skills by three. Okay. All right. It looks like, yeah, I'm not, um, the game doesn't automatically know I stole. It doesn't seem like that yet. Can we? here. Oh, pet talk? Ah, uh, no pet talk. Oh, wow. Ah, damn, a lot more things to do here. But the, oh, wait, I can go in the foot locker. Oh, because the foot locker's empty, of course. That's why they let me go into the foot locker. All right. All right, let's talk to these fine folks and see if any of them... Mm, we're going to do sleep through the wolf herb. Work great. What's up? Arlene. She was one of the people in the special room, right? The Vinny 3 would be a welcome sight. But they need to shorten their games because their final acts are always a slog because you get burnt out at the end. So it'll be interesting to see. I, I, I absolutely believe that they're going to go for Divinity. But they said their game is going to be different from what people expect. Which makes me think they're not going to be doing Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, Original Sin 3 rather. Which is kind of disappointing honestly. But... If I remember correctly, the original Divinity games were a little different from the ones we have right now. Like, weren't they like, didn't weren't they doing strategy games at one point or something like that? So maybe they're going back to those routes. I'm not sure. No matter what Larian does, you know, I'm gonna play it. But I will be disappointed if it's not another RPG. 
You met Arlene during your testing period. She's in charge of food preparation and rationing. Ha! We used to make fun of Tanner's stupidly high standards with admitting new people. Not the end of the world if we get someone imperfect, we said. Here you are, bringing us earthquakes on day one. Very funny, Arlene. I was only kidding. Don't take it too seriously. Anyway, what do you need? Who's that dandy over there? Over there? That's a Than Lanford. What can you tell me about him? Why did I call him a dandy? <laughs> He's a handsome man. <laughs> Comes to SDS from time to time. Always dressed as sharp as a razor. He's always flirting with the ladies. No exceptions. I've seen him entertain quite a number of them. Well, myself included with some unusual psionic tricks. Tricks? Well, he's a, what you call it, a temporal manipulator. It's one of those psi abilities, disciplines, what you call it. But the thing he does, I've never seen anyone else do before. He can manipulate time, but only for specific objects, like slowing down a fly so it moves its wings in slow motion, or making things hover in air, that sort of stuff. It's all parlor tricks, fun and unusual, good to attract the ladies. These good looks and charms make them stick around, though. That's his real magic. Mm. <laughs> know anything else about him? Where is he from? What does he do? Not much. He's talkative, but reveals little about himself when you think about it. No one knows where he's from or what he does. He usually comes alone, maybe leaves with a girl, maybe not, depends. Always drinks fizzy water, yes. Has that temporal manipulation thing going for him. And that's all I know, really. Oh yeah, dresses as sharp as... Oh, wait, I said that already. Hmm, thank you. There was something else I wanted to ask you. Yes? So how bad was it, the earthquake? For us, not that bad. The south tunnel collapsed, so the train is out for a while. The station itself didn't suffer any major damage, as far as I know. I've heard it's much worse up north. Something about a Union's freighter crashing and getting buried on a side rail near Core Kid City. Man, I can already imagine all the vermin crawling out of their holes to take a bite of that cake. And I'm not talking about rat hounds. What else is new besides the earthquake? Gorski's gathering up his squad. Don't know what they're up to, but they're armed. Heard any good rumors? There's been very little pirate activity lately. The Black Eels seem to be doing a damn fine job. Heard any good rumors? Harlan told me he's starting to see more and more lurkers near their underpassages exit. Heard any good rumors? Apparently the free drones are becoming more and more active in South Underwear. Some even say they have a hideout in Junkyard. Captain Savannah recently told me about another poor soul sailing the Silent Isle. Haven't seen him since. I heard Mordred has been acquiring some quality cigars lately. Wonder who's his supplier? No one knows who's that man that's been found in Mushroom Cove. Think Pasquale still examining the body. I guess Junkyard still hasn't gotten rid of old Chopper. One more victim found in pieces. Rumor has it that there are quite a number of people sitting outside United Station's embassy in Junkyard. Guess they've been feeding them good. And looks like that's it. All right, I'd like to order something. Barter. What do you got here? Stuffed bat. A bat stuffed with three kinds of mushrooms and a mixture of seeds. Ha ha ha, that's crazy. Root soda, non-alcoholic, sweet tasting beverage. Okay. Side beetle brain soup. When consumed, decreases psi-ability, psi cost by 15%. Okay, so this lady is all about the food. All right, works for me. Interesting, interesting. I don't agree with that. Divinity uh, 3 would be awesome, though. What do you disagree with? Oh, 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 don't agree regarding their last acts being uh, poor, a slaw to get through. I think their last acts are consistently a slaw to get through upon, upon launch. I think long term, it, it, they clean it up and it gets much better. But Divinity Original Sin 2, when it first came out, the last act was filled with bugs. It was really difficult to get through all of it. Baldur's Gate 3, I think it was a little more stable, but still way more bugs than other parts of the game. And I, I don't think it's as strong as the first act. And that's really part of the problem too. Uh, Larian, it, their first act seems to always be the best act of the game, which personally I don't like. I would much rather mid-game or the end game really be the best part 
of the overall experience, but it just is what it is. One of the video games were wild. One of them was strategy, one of the originals was like Diablo, another was third person action RPG with some fight sim mechanics. Mmm. Interesting, okay. True Mortal, what's going on? How are you? Glad to see you finally playing this. The gameplay is just as punishing as Pathfinder, except you have to do it all alone. Yep, I'm already getting a sense of that. <laughs> she crushing, yeah. Yeah, she flirting hard. Apparently, she's spitting with dude. <laughs> Sorry, just be careful with build and point allocation because there is no respect. Yeah, I, I, I heard about that. That's kind of rough. I can't remember the last time I played a game that didn't allow you to respect at all, but it is what it is. You aren't too good in one school, then don't in one skill, then don't spec into it. Mm -hmm. Super strong first acts, everything else seems rushed. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if it feel. I wouldn't say it feels rushed because again, um, I felt like Act One in Baldur's Gate Three super super strong. Act Two was also very strong. I enjoyed it immensely, and for the most part, it was stable. Act Three is when it was like, okay, this felt like it might have needed a little bit more time. But it wasn't to the point I was like, they should have pushed the release date out a few months. You know, I was like, this is a little bit harder to get to, get through than I would prefer, but I'm not going to knock it. Whereas with Divinity of Rizzo Sin 2, Act 1, Fort Joy, probably the best part of the game. Act 2 was pretty good as well. Like, it's not quite as good, but it's up there. It's, it's fantastic. Whereas Act 3, I feel, is a significant step down in quality from the first two acts. And then Act 4, when the game first released, it was terrible. It was bug-ridden. It was difficult to even get in, get through. It was it, it was a slog absolutely getting through it. Now, with the Enhanced Edition, uh, most of those bugs and issues have been cleared up. It's still not as good as the first two acts, though. But at least you can get through it without feeling like it's this huge chore. You know, so... Almost a CRPG trope where the final arc is a slog at first, yeah. Oh, man. Alcat, you know, Alcat is not as bad, though. Wrath of the Righteous, I feel like, wasn't a... You know what? I guess they are as bad. Wrath of the Righteous, the final act wasn't a slog to get through. It's just that Act 5 is really the final act. And Act 5, in a lot of ways, is fun. Whereas... No, I'm sorry. Act 4, maybe? Act 4 is the really the final act. And in a lot of ways, that's fun. Whereas Act 5, it's like, this serves no purpose. You could have just let me go straight to the uh, final boss. I didn't need all this other stuff. Uh, Rogue Trader, definitely the last act felt like it was fluff. It felt like you really should have just let me get straight to the final boss. Why are you bothering me with all that? Whereas Act 4, it's got some cool stuff in it. It doesn't feel that bad. Kingmaker, oh, the, the la going through that castle, the maze and all that. Oh, that was brutal that was a brutal slog i hated that hated that i can't tell by cash me i know it's my game <laughs> oh my uh like bg3 i too could have easily had options yep yeah it would have been nice What's uh, Act 3 and BG3? Act 4 and DOS 2? Is it better than Act 3 and, and, and BG3? Uh, I wouldn't say that, but I guess it is up for debate. They really want to get BG3 out before Starfield. Oh, yeah, no way they could have known that the game was shit. Yeah, this is true. I forgot about that. Uh, I definitely at the time felt like that was a great move, that they really needed to make sure... Uh, the game came out first. Before you use a handsome young man whose attire portrays him as someone who prefers charm over harm. That, that's it. That, that's an interesting way to say it. Whether it looks deceived or not, though, is a question that is yet to be answered. In his hand, a glass of fizzy water, he calmly addresses you. May I help you? Are you Ethan Lanford? And you are? Hmm. Hmm. Slander. I was told you are someone who might know a thing or two about temporal manipulation. Ah, yes, that is true. I am a temporal manipulator. A psionic, 
whose expertise lies in the discipline of temporal manipulation. If you are here to learn new abilities to expand your arsenal psionic powers, then you're talking to the right guy. Well, can you tell me about temporal manipulation? Temporal manipulation, it is a psionic discipline that allows one to manipulate time in many different ways, accelerated, decelerated, suspended, reversing. But before you get your hopes up too much, the effects are on a local level, meaning that one's reshaping or even disfigurement of the structure of the universe will not have large scale consequences, but will rather only affect a small, small part of space time, just the very part that is being manipulated. I understand if you're finding this difficult to comprehend. It's not an accessible subject, really. Regardless, it is an immensely powerful discipline in the right hands, but is sadly underused. Why is temporal manipulation so underused? To become a master temporal manipulator, one needs time. Time to manipulate, time to practice, time to experience. The first one, it is the very core of our universe, space-time. We manipulate the temporal, but for space-time to remain in balance, the spatial must react. The second one, as with any skill, one needs to extensively train, develop his abilities in order to become proficient at them. This takes time to practice, but one is also practicing on time itself. But the third point, that is the most important one. The thing that sets temporal manipulation apart from other side disciplines. Temporal manipulation, on its most basic level, does not possess the destructive power of other disciplines. No pyrokinetic fireballs or accelerated ice shards. No ways to drive your enemies derailed. Cause them to fight each other or against the horrors plucked out of their own minds. Manipulating time requires time requires temporal experience. With other disciplines, even if one doesn't understand their meaning, one can achieve much through simply understanding the mechanics. With temporal manipulation, mechanics only have meaning if you understand the passage of time. This sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> this is a great way to make a magical discipline sound really, really interesting. I, I love this dialogue right here. I am a fan. I am a fan. Act one, act two, right? Act three, act four, act five. Yeah, it's just act five. Yeah, it's just five acts. Sounds are such fun. <laughs> Could be RPG with MMO quests. <laughs> Look at you, Final Fantasy. <laughs> Yo, eight monsters, breathe, breathe this legends, person they come back, please do this, please do that. Forget the bad game and look at all this content we fill the game with. Such wonders. <laughs> Man. Hmm. Hmm. You're implying that it takes an old person to be a good manipulator. Yet you're looking pretty damn young. I do look young, yes. But I have experience. I may be one of the best, which, I admit, doesn't say much considering there aren't many of us out there. But I still have a life ahead of me to truly acquire the experience I told you about. However, I have been taught by the best, you see. Yes, yes, Arthur Kane, my mentor and a true master of temporal manipulation, has helped me understand certain important things much earlier than I normally would. But that is a whole other story. Anything interesting going on? Not much, unfortunately. The cave-in has us all trapped in here, so, like a lot of the people, I'm waiting for the tracks to get cleared before I can move on. But it's not much of a problem. I've always liked this place. Now then, okay, if you just let that again, he says the same thing again. Tell me more about Arthur Kane, your mentor. Perhaps some other time. It is a long story, and I, you know, I don't feel like telling it right now. He nods. Some other time. What do you think of Southgate Station? 
I have been here before many times and will return again if time allows. There are places where more fun can be had. Nothing tops Core City in that regard, at least not in South Rail's underground. But Southgate Station is a place where I find most relaxing. It is a safe, well-defended station with civilized citizens. The earthquake sort of forced me to stay here, but I don't mind. Moreover, I'd rather be stuck here than at some low-life infested bar, worrying whether someone is going to stab me in the back. Where will you be going? Where will you be going after the rocks cleared? I'm thinking Core City, probably Core City. But the life of a traveler is an unpredictable one. Why are you drinking fizzy water? Water is the best drink. The fizz simply makes it a bit more interesting. No other reason. I have to go. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. RM, what's going on? You're playing under rail? Fantastic. Good timing. Great minds, man. Great minds. You're going to have more heavier dating sim elements instead of side quest paths. <laughs> we'll see. Fun, but a bit too punishing sometimes. Yeah, I might end up turning down the easy. We'll see. I feel like some parts of the game make you take out the traps and grenade spam. We'll see. Okay. First few uh, goals of this game really rough me up. What's going on, Balaco? I saw all this cool side stuff, but because how punishing it is and no respect, you can't really afford to dip. It's all got to be planned. Yeah, so I planned from the very beginning to just be a side character. My hands are ready for me to... <laughs> What's going on, Sunset? How are you? Also, is the music a bit too loud? Uh, let me know if it is, but I don't think so. Never mind. It's my... Oh, it's your PC. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So we talked to these people, talked to them. I don't think we talked to you. Who are you? Jack Quicksilver. No party members in this game, right? We're always alone. Haven't seen you around here before. You stuck in this hole now as well? No, actually, I'm new here. Name's Jack Quicksilver. Where are you from, Jack? I'm not a citizen of any place, if that's what you're asking. I travel around a lot, but when I'm not on a train, I spend most of my time in Core City. What brought you here in the first place? Lucrative business opportunity, but it slipped past me, unfortunately. Where are you from, Jack? Oh, no, I already asked that. What brought you here? What do you do for a living? Are you a trader? Among other things, yeah. You looking to trade? Show me what you got. Ooh, weapons. Look at you. A value of 1,509. I have no weapons. Oh, I should get a grenade, right? Balclava. This is a three-hole balclava made of black claw, perfect for ninjas and other types of sneaky people. Um, when equipped, it increases stealth and intimidation. This increases agility and stealth. They are padded with salt bone. Ten percent. Um, let's see. Nope, armor penalty 10%. That's not gonna work. We need, uh, right, 50%. We need 10%. Omni tool opens a ventilation shaft. This will require a certain level of lock picking skill. Mm. Oh, we're definitely gonna need lock picks. Lock picking MK2, and then just a regular lock pick. What's the difference? Uh, they both. Seconds. With your lock, effective lock picking skill, you can pick a lock above the 18 difficulty rating with this lock. Uh, whereas this only goes to 13 rating. That's interesting. What's this? Throwing knife? Okay. Stygian coin. This light stainless super steel coin is engraved with an image of Sharon, the mythic Stygian ferryman. It's the most common currency of the South Under Rail because the value is derived directly from the value of the metal it's made of. Okay, so it's just a form of currency. So credits are not the only form of currency. Interesting. Terrain is a fallback in the bear traps and nades because the game leaves very little room for experimentation and what you will only lose hours. Gotcha. This Digimon game. The Digimon world? Why? <laughs> Only after a serious commitment of violence do you start to understand pre-bills and the character bill calculate its value. Mm. It's definitely Hammer Wizard. Hammer Wizard? How does that work? What is this gig? Bypass 80%. Oh, oh, this is for uh, unarmed combat? Okay. All right. We might have to come back to this guy before um, leaving. 
Um, what happened with that business opportunity? It's a business secret. If you're interested in doing some work, though, that's something I can arrange. What kind of work? Package delivery. I'll pay you an SGS credit. It's 100 pieces. You interested? Yeah. Tell me the details. He beckons you closer. You know where the GMS warehouse block is? Yes. First, go to the barracks at the station platform here in SGS. This key will open one of the foot lockers and the package will be inside. He hands you the key. Take the package to the warehouse block, to the building just south of the GMS compound. A man will be waiting for the package there and you'll get your money. Why don't you take the package yourself? No questions. We will not speak of this again until the job is done. What? Alright, fine, bro. Fine, I'll play along. Alright, commoner. Thomas has collapsed. How's it going? The scavenger was found. Security guard. Did you sleep through the earthquake? Commoner. Commoner. Okay, these people. Oh, that's Vincel there. What up, Vincel? Oh, he doesn't have anything to say. Alright. He just says cheers. Okay, cool. Been in here, so the only place I haven't been in is here. What's up? What's going on here? Oh, I completely forgot. I can, um, you can tap. Switch box. Wait, it says one box is empty, but there's another box, I guess. Oh, and there's another cabinet, looks like. Knife glass can is also fun, but very stealth trap heavy. Elric, what's going on, man? I'll tell you this, brother. I can't wait to see the day where you can make a DD2 video. People actually talk about the game instead of misinformation. <laughs> I've gotten used to it, dude. It just is what it is. And nothing is happening when I'm clicking on that cap. He walks up to it, but doesn't actually open it. Maybe, um... Maybe you need a special key to get into it. Uh, nothing in there either. There's some psychokinesis feats that increase your damage based on strength. Ooh, there we go. Psychokinesis also helps your defense. Even, um... Uh, for more, even more taking this. Nice. Okay. So it helps with some of the deficiencies that a normal heavy hammer build have. Interesting. Planning out your builds kind of sucks because it takes you out of the game, but the trade off is you don't waste extremely valuable stat points in the building you want to use. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I agree, Elric. This game is, uh, is really interesting. All right, talk to Harold in it. On the engineering level, we need to go to engineering. We can either go to medical from the barracks to SGS platform near the tunnel. Near the tunnel. All right. I also need to go here. Uh, oh, and this is the platform is where I get the package. So here, let's go to. All right, so let's go to med. Oh, medical and psionics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Let's get my powers. What's up with that? Bugmite, what's going on, dude? How are you, man? I feel like I haven't seen you on the stream for a while. Hope you're doing well. Hacking 90. Well, I'm definitely not able to hack that right now. Slander. First of all, let me congratulate you on your admittance to our little station. I'm sure you'll love it here. It's good that you came. I actually wanted to talk to you about some of the results from all those tests we did earlier. Is there something wrong with me? No, no, quite the contrary. Sorry if I scared you. You see, test results show that you have certain amounts of psionic potential. The what? Allow me to explain what psionic potential really is. It's a relatively rare, inheritable, complex genetic trait that triggers development of certain otherwise latent components in the brain. It allows a person to perform some subtle psionic invocations, such as influencing the minds of others, as well as some not so subtle ones, such as causing radical temperature changes and telekinetic manipulations. How did this genetic trait come to be? No one is really sure. Research indicates that it's a relatively recent genetic mutation, but it sure could not have been a random one, 
So many things about it are just too complex and convenient to be anything but artificially designed. There are problems with this hypothesis, though. Former BioCorp's head of genetic research, Dr. Hal Roach, outlined these problems best in his thesis. I won't bore you with details, but the essence of the problem is that with the technology that we currently have at our disposal, creating, testing, and integrating genetic structures of such complexity is simply not possible without a colossal amount of trial and error work. So much trial and error work, Rocha argued, that even if you combine all the genetic processes in the world in this time and let them work on the subject for the entire time of their existence, they would still be extremely unlikely to produce these results. Furthermore, Roche points out that the structures of the brain where innervation that allows psionic activity takes place were never studied in such depth. Even though we know plenty about how the brain as a whole works, there's a large gap between the top-down research performed by psychologists and neurologists and bottom-up research done by neuroscientists studying neurons and receptors. Inside this gap lies psionics, but due to the brain's nature and complexity, those who wish to study it need to start from either of these directions and slowly approach the middle. Hmm. Some main bill benchmarks are several hours in. Mm, I really wish there was a respect. To me, that's the biggest issue with the game. It's way too hard to test out builds. Yeah, I, I usually don't like games that don't have a respect, to be honest with you. Dragonborn for BG3 is by far the most awesome looking racing game. I agree. Love that their color can, color can fit with their whole playstyle. I, I really want to make a Dragonborn um, a sorcerer. Because they've got that dragon blood um, subclass, and then it adds more distinction to their uh, physical look. It's just fantastic. Bandito, what's up, man? Just watched a bunch of your Pillars of Eternity content before I'm about to start my first playthrough. It's very helpful. That's fantastic to hear. Um, one of my April goals is to start on Deadfire content. So I want to do a review for Pillars of Eternity 2 break down all the classes and do a new user guide just like I did for Pillars of Returning 1. So glad you uh, enjoyed it for the first one. I hope you enjoy it for the second one as well. They consider the worst race and no means that means people shouldn't play it. Why would they be considered the worst race? I'm looking forward to Infusion. Hopefully engine upgrades are worth it. So I don't know anything about this game so I don't really know anything about Infusion either other than my understanding is you're supposed to be playing a different character but what are some of the uh, upgrades or things that are supposed to be improved with the sequel, Beluka? Doing just fine. This game looks like Fallout. I can see the likely influence. Yeah, it seems like some of the look is influenced by it, but my understanding is the story and the overall game, it's totally different from Fallout. So we'll see. Zamal caught Dragonborn Reborn. If you want to play Dragonborn, I highly recommend it. Unfortunately, the other good Dragonborn mod, this fan's Treasury of Dragons, is pretty outdated. Hmm. Well, I means D and D. The dice rolls are much more punishing. Plus, you can cast mirror image on yourself. Or, or are you playing standard XP or oddity? Oddity. Got to admit that I've been ambivalent about this game for quite some time. <laughs> Even as an isometric CRPG fan, I'm not sure if this is up my alley. Not to mention, it's supposed to be a 100-hour game. What do you uh, feel like you would dislike about it, Bug Mike? Besides the fact that it's 100 hours. Well, I want to. There were psychic powers there too, but the player couldn't really use them. Dead Fire is an underrated game. Yep. Um, I, I think it caught a lot of flack when it first launched because it wasn't quite ready, but uh, Obsidian patched it and updated a lot, and I feel like it's really nice now. I'll be ready for them. You know, make up my mind on class. Going to play Cypher. Nice! Okay, I, I think you'll definitely end up enjoying that. Has nothing besides Dragon's Breath. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and Dragon's Breath isn't really anything to write home about. Fusion is going to bring so many new players, and I'm going to watch the complaint and demand features stick to tell them no. Uh, why do you feel like it's going to bring so many new players? Hurt to get psychic and immunity. Storm Sorcerer is probably the most fun class to play in BG3 other than Paladin. I've never played a Storm Sorcerer before. That's something I want to do when we go through uh, Honor Mode for BG3. My support should be coming to consoles of BG3. I really hope some good mods there. We'll see. Uh, monk. I've never played a monk either, so I definitely uh, monk. I, I, I've never done druid, monk, or storm sorcerer. So I'm gonna have three party members are definitely gonna cover those. 
is just kind of bad in BG3, unfortunately. Elemental resistance is decent, but the breadth is pretty bad. I still want to be a uh, Dragonborn regardless. So you see, it's a bit of a mystery. We know much more about how to make it work than how it actually works. Interesting. Indeed it is. Is there something else you want to know? So how do I realize this potential? You must first disable your psionic inhibitor. It's a neural structure in your brain that prevents you from innervating or accessing your psionic projection centers. We assume it was designed to, present, to prevent the infants from unwittingly harming themselves or those around them. There are ways to perform this innervation by deep, extended meditation, but this can take years and years. We have more efficient methods nowadays. He reaches into his pocket, then opens his hand before you. You see a large red pill. <laughs> nice. It'll take care of your inhibitor right away, but there is one side effect I am obliged to mention. The majority of users experience immediate and significant weakening of their immune system. And when I say majority, I mean everyone. To put it bluntly, it will severely affect your health. Therefore, the choice is yours. Is the process dangerous, painful? No, 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 not at all. Well, maybe a bit dangerous for some, but it doesn't hurt at all. Much. You might get a bit woozy, but that's it. Do I need to prepare somehow? No, just go ahead and swallow it. Take the pill and swallow it. You force the oversized pill down, and for a while, nothing happens. I don't think it's working. Slander, are you all right? Can you hear me? Ah, good, you're awake. How are you feeling? Oh, my head hurts. What happened? Disabling the inhibitor seems to have caused a psionic surge, but you're all right now. While you were out, I took the liberty of performing some more testing to determine the actual levels of your psionic potential, and it is great. I wholeheartedly suggest that you start your training immediately. Also, take these. He hands you a pair of syringes filled with blue liquid. These side boosters will help increase your psionic recovery rate. Basically, they'll allow you to use more psi abilities within a certain period of time than you normally could. They're fairly cheap, work fast, have no major side effects, and are equally useful to beginners and experienced psionics alike. There isn't a reason not to have a couple when you're going out there. And then he hands you four unusual inhalers. And these contain desaturated psionic inhalants. They'll replenish your psionic reserves and also help neurohormonal regulation and alleviate synaptic fatigue, especially after extensive innervation. Just like muscles recover from fatigue with the help of the body's glu glucagon reserves, so does your mind have its own finite psionic equivalent. Persuade, only a pair of boosters? Uh, what do you mean by only a pair? That's quite sufficient to get you started. Hmm, I wonder if, um, okay, so there's no log telling you how close you were to succeeding or anything like that. Interesting. Unreal 2 is on a new engine and with better graphics, so it'll lure, lure in new people. Really? All right, I'll definitely be sure to pl play it when it comes out. But at the same time, there's so many things in BG3 that make your character just outright broken, so Dragonborn is very viable. Got you. Droid is great in BG3, except for a couple of teething issues with Wild Shade. So that may not be my thing. I'm more of a high fantasy guy. Ah, I don't mind sci-fi settings like this, but it has to keep me hooked. Got you, got you. Pop both pills, became the ultimate being. <laughs> um, I love sci-fi and fantasy. But usually I'm not a big fan of games that are have a hyper focus on challenge because uh, I don't necessarily enjoy challenge. Like it's cool if I'm going through a great story to deal with a game that uh, has a high focus on challenge, but it's usually not really my thing. Hope on the rail two has two player co-op. Ooh, if it has two player co-op, we will play it on stream and I'll link up with y'all. Only thing with Dragon Ball and BG3 is a lack of racial activity compared to others. What do you mean racial activity? Monk and Oblivion is great fun. Here's the sign. Cyber Pillars Attorney is so broken as I remember. It can be if you do it right. 
Check out the water waste plant level. See you type me in. Slander, which would you recommend for a damage focused cipher? Ranged or melee? I always went with ranged and never regretted it. I heard melee can be very effective as well though. You're in. Yeah, pillar turning one. I'd say, uh, I think melee is supposed to be more effective for generating whatever that um, pool, the resource pool that is used by Cypress. I think melee is supposed to be more effective for generating more of it, but it also is very dangerous for a Cypher because you're not able to put effort into your defensive abilities the way other classes can. So it's much safer to just go ranged. Reactivity. I got you. I got you. Dragonborn don't have much, much reactivity. Yeah. I really, really want to, when I do my next evil playthrough in um, BG3, I'm definitely going to play as a drow. I really want to see what the drow reactivity looks like. I, I did my evil playthrough as an orc, and that was cool, but I didn't feel like there was really that much orc reactivity. Pro especially not probably compared to what they get as what you get as a drow. Uh, do you like puzzle games like Zelda? I've actually never played a Zelda game before, but I do like puzzle games. My favorite puzzle game is probably Return of the Uberden. Um, so uh, games like that. I also was a fan of King's Quest uh, back in the day when it used to be good, not the new version, the old versions, murder versions. Uh, I definitely enjoy those. I also enjoyed Portal uh, back in the day. So. I like puzzle games, but it's got to be coupled with a good story. I don't like puzzle games just to be doing a bunch of puzzles. Um, I've got a lot of dangerous work ahead of me, Doc. And considering I've yet to become an experienced psionic, I'd rather not find myself short on brain juice when I need it most. Just use them wisely and you should be alright. Or you can simply purchase them. They're cheap, but not cheap enough for me to be giving them away just like that. Yep, I can already tell. Being without persuasion is annoying to me. <laughs> I can already tell that. Where can I get more side boosters and inhalants? Most doctor's offices should have them in supply, mine included. I can sell you some if you'd like. So how do I start learning psionic abilities? You have to talk to those already adept at it and see if they'll teach you. You have two very good specialists in our station. Quentin is well versed in metathermics, which is the area of psionic development that deals with instigating rapid temperature changes and chemical reactions. He used to be one of BioCorp's researchers working on new applications of psionics. You'll find him on the agron agronomy level. Bisson is our martial arts expert. He can teach you psychokinetics and how to effectively use it in unarmed combat, if that's something you're interested in. He's usually in the gymnasium across the hall, but I think he's helping with clearing up the tunnels right now, so you'll likely find him at the station platform. Thought control discipline is considered by many to be nefarious, and it's also the hardest to get really good at. I'm not sure who here can teach you it. I heard rumors that Ezra, the chief of engineering, is actually a powerful mind controller, but I don't know if that's true. Most people here, including me, know nothing about Ezra, so it might just be that some of them are making this stuff up. And then there's temporal manipulation, which purportedly allows one to control time itself. I've never seen it in action. It's a discipline few practice. However, I've heard that a man that goes by the name of, what was it? Uh, Ethan Landford. Yes, Ethan Landford. I've heard that he is a practitioner of the discipline. He's not from around here, but he does visit SDS from time to time. In fact, I just saw him in the bar moments ago. I'm sure Arlene knows him more about him. Ask her if you're interested. Anyway, I have to get back to work. Do you have any more questions? You keep mentioning the word innervation. What does it mean exactly? The word itself can mean several things. To supply with nerves, to stimulate, or to provide nerves with energy. In the context of psionics, in order for psionic invocation to take place, the brain's neural current circuit needs to be suited for that specific invocation, fine-tuned even if maximum efficacy is desired. Innervation is, thus, the training of the nervous system through stimulation of neural pathways and focus. It is a taxing but necessary process for anybody who wishes to learn or relearn psionic abilities. 
Also, certain individuals naturally exhibit increased neurogenesis, creation of new neurons, giving them greater neural capacity, while those with strong dedication can also work to improve themselves in this regard. One other thing I have to mention is that just like sprinting and long tunnel running require different training regime, regimes and body types, so does the neural circuit require different neural infrastructures for different psionic disciplines. Optimizing for one set of abilities will de-optimize for the other. So majority of psionics, especially less experienced ones, stay away from multidisciplinarity due to the increased strain it puts on their mind and sometimes sanity. Anyway, I have to get back to work now. Do you have any more questions? Hmm. Uh, I don't want to barter just now. Got it. Now, there was something else I wanted to talk to you about. Go ahead. I heard there's a dead man in the operating room. Hmm. The dude... I'm going range for Cypher, but can I use firearms? Yes, you can. Yep, that's what I usually do. No, actually, a long term I end up using a bow, but you could use a firearm long term as well. Dude on the table with the blood is one of the hidden randomized levels. The doctor in that room will also give you something special. Okay. So range is maybe a slower stop, but it's much safer, and in turn, you'll do more damage that way. Can't do too much damage if you're dead. Exactly. Reactivity is mostly based on Drown Gift Yankee. I played those first, so when I went to others, it was a contrast. Okay. Uh, I hadn't really planned to do a Gift Yankee playthrough, but I absolutely want to do Drown, so I'm looking forward to that. So you're playing this for the first time? Yep. Don't you usually prefer to play a game you haven't played before on your own? first before live streaming it absolutely that's my preference but in this particular case i don't plan to do a full playthrough of this game i'm going to stream this episode maybe i'll do one more the channel voted and the channel wants to play tyranny so I, i'm kind of done with dragon's dogma 2 I, I think i might have lost interest in that so i plan to go back to the type of games i usually play so we're going to do tyranny um next but i'm just streaming this for just an episode or two that's all and so that's why i'm comfortable playing it even though i've never played it before Forums regarding persuasion is infuriating. Everyone says it's useless because it has no combat effectiveness, but they completely disregard how much free shit and avoidance it offers. Mm hmm. And a maximum for my first playthrough I finished. Didn't regret it. Nice. Nice. Come on. Being done. And that's all you need to know about them. No need to be infuriated by them. <laughs> yeah, persuasion is awesome on your first and most likely only run. To have things go your way. Or, or to learn more of the world and earn more money is always worth it. Got you. Okay. Yeah, if I end up doing a full uh, playthrough of this game, I'm definitely building up persuasion. Because for me, it's just really, really annoying not to have it. A guard found him dying in Mushroom Cove. Identity is still unknown. Probably some scavenger. But he had very few items on him when he was found. What happened to him? The body is covered in green growths, universally associated with mutagen exposure. No one knows what exactly transpired, but he was dead on arrival. Can I, can I see the body? What for? I may know this person. Well, I suppose. I suppose it can allow it. Just don't touch the body, okay? Can I talk to this guard who found him? I don't know which of the guards brought him in. Malcolm, the security officer, can help you with that. He's at the cave exit on the lowest level of the station. I'd like to talk about something else. <coughs> Listening? I don't know if you just gotta tell me. Uh, do you have anything to trade? Alright, so let's see. Vial. Impure. What's this? Adrenaline shot. What's this? Vigorous belt. Fortitude increased by 15. Health increased by 30. Uh huh. Desaturated psionic inhaling. Restores 1,500 reserve side points and 200 side points over 10 seconds. Something tells me I'm going to need some more of that. All right. Ooh, I can go into it. And hey, don't let me take all that. I'll take it then. There. There. 
Nothing there. Oh. Honestly, I hate it when games do the uh, do this. Give you a bunch of things to open and then make the vast majority of them empty. But I do know that it, it probably makes sense in this uh, game. There were no fatalities in the earthquake. Okay. Oh, I came in. I think I came in through here, didn't I? Shells. Oh, oh, right. We started here, and then he brought me over here. That's the way. When I passed out, he brought me over here. That's what happened. Okay. And now he's back over here, which means I can't do this stuff. Lady. I can't loot any of this. All right, let's just open it. If you want to buy something, talk to Pascal. I'm busy. All right. Is the attribute split like like this good for a psyker? 18 might. Um. In my opinion, uh, no, Bandito. So, first and foremost, uh, Res, I, I forgot what RES stands for. Resi is resist is basically taking this, right? Uh, I would dump that. I would take it all the way down to three. And the reason for that, it's only good if you're gonna be tanking. And even for tanking, you don't necessarily need it. So, absolutely, for your type of character, I would dump it all the way. Might is kind of a um it's kind of an illusion it's kind of a it, it deceives you all right so they present might as if it's the stat that decides the most whether or not you're going to deal damage but that's actually not really true all right like you could deal a ton of damage even if you don't have a great might score so i would not increase might up to 18. what you want to focus on the most is dexterity and uh perception and if I, I don't remember which one of them focuses more on, I think both of them are important and that perception might be a little bit more important because what you really need is speed. You need to be attacking, 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 building up your, um, uh, your, your resource pool like crazy and then it'll allow you to spam really devastating attacks. And here's the thing about Cypher as well. Yes, it does have some good attack spells, but where it really, really shines is that you can do incredible crowd control. Like you can absolutely, you can flat out paralyze enemies, which is the strongest debuff in the game. And you can paralyze them multiple times over the course of the game. So that's where Cypher really, really shines. So don't just think about it in terms of, uh, uh, of damage. Think about it in terms of your play style because again, if you're really focusing on crowd control, what's most important is that you get that crowd control out as quickly as possible. Especially since in Pillars of Eternity, you can stack up the amount of time that a debuff lasts on a particular enemy. So let's say you use a debuff on an enemy and then you paralyze them for like six seconds. If you cast it again on that enemy, then they could end up being staying paralyzed for like 12 or 15 seconds. Right, so it, it there's there's a lot of a lot of strategy in how you use that. So I would recommend I I, I have a new player guide on Pillars of Eternity. I don't know if you got a chance to watch that yet, but I think you should so that you understand what the different attributes all really mean and have a better idea of how to build up your cipher. Uh, Tyranny is great, but it should have feel so short. Really should have gotten a sequel. Yep. I would love Tyranny to get a sequel, but unfortunately, that is the type of game that I feel like the player base it appeals to is too small. Most people don't want to be the villain. They don't want to even be considered the villain at the beginning. Like, they, they, uh, a lot of players, they, they have a goody two shoes attitude when it comes to playing games. When, if I stream, I prefer doing my first time live, like giving people first time reactions. Hey, by all means, me personally, 
I take pride in helping people understand how to play a game and helping people understand the mechanics of the game. So it doesn't appeal to me to kind of be fumbling through a game live because it makes me feel like I'm not giving content that's as valuable. And I know that's not really true because there's an entertainment factor to it as well. So I just personally prefer when I can entertain and educate at the same time. I don't like when it's just entertainment, especially in a situation like this where not only do I not know and understand the game, so I can't really answer any questions about it, but it's also very, very dialogue heavy. Like, I'm going to stream this game for at least three hours. We might not fight anything <laughs> for this entire three hours, which, you know, on a personal level, makes me feel even more like, am I really delivering content that people want to see? And so, like, it's hard, kind of hard for me to work through that. Whereas, if I already knew this game and played through this game, the whole time we're doing other things, I'd be telling people, like, yo, these are the builds you should be using. These are the mechanics. This is what makes the game great. You know, I could fill it up with a lot of other informative things regarding the game that would give me more confidence that I'm giving you all good content. But we'll see how you feel when you start st streaming 3. I'll be interested to see how that works out. It's about replay value. That's true. Tyranny has fantastic replay value. It's a game I want to I wanna play. I think it's on sale. I highly recommend you play Tyranny. We'll be streaming it starting sometime this week. So one time it's out of oddity for me. Constantly checking everything to make sure I haven't missed one. Only to search an entire room and find none. Mm -hmm. Resolve. Yeah, that's what R.E.S. is. Yeah, you can completely dump Resolve. Unreal Story is wild. And there are not many games that would take the leaps and risks that it does. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've actually, this is, I've heard that multiple times that Unreal has a fantastic story. Yeah, oddity has its downsides. But it's the only mode that gives a smooth leveling experience. Interesting. So, yeah, it seems like there's some back and forth on that because I know Abyss, you said it's smooth, but a couple of other people said they feel like it, it makes the game more difficult and that um, it kind of falls off towards the end. Like, towards the end of the game, you're barely getting any oddities, but someone who was based around completing quests and doing skill checks would get a lot more XP. Intelligence improves the race. Yes, that, uh, James is absolutely correct. Intelligence is what you really want to focus on, in my opinion. Like in, in, in intelligence and I think perception were what I kind of uh, uh, lean more towards. Man, a murder quest, cool. <laughs> you got me, I swipe through the 12 might, ex constitution, and dexterity. That sounds a little bit better. It's hard for me to tell you whether or not that's exactly the uh, right split. I think you might want to put a put constitution in like 10. I don't think you want to completely dump constitution. But that, that's a, probably a much better split. Exactly. The majority of plays like being the hero. More than gray. I like to share lore from wherever I'm playing to when I can't. Exactly. Exactly. All I need is a functioning mic and I'll get to streaming. Okay. I'm looking forward to it, man. You kids go so I can buy my shiny. I like to say the world of fashion. <laughs> When's the BG3 player guide? Um, uh, take care, GM. Have a good one. So I kind of played a little bit of uh, Baldur's Gate 3 and then fell off of it and moved on to other things. We're going to circle after, in fact, after Tyranny. The next thing I plan to do is a um, honor mode, a co-op honor mode playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. I'm going to use the mod that lets me use all the party members at the same time. And then I'll let anybody from the community who wants to jump in and just play, we'll all just come play together and be out in the world together. And as part of that, that'll allow me to refresh the game, get comfortable with the mechanics and stuff like that. And then I'll come out with, with the usual type of content, new player's guide, class overview, class rankings, all that kind of stuff. So looking forward to it. Before you is a body of a young scavenger, a man barely over 20, if over at all. You have some difficulty telling the age as the state the body's in really undermines your perception. Inspect the deceased. His somewhat deformed body is covered in small, pox-sized green tumors from whose base thin, mycelium-like tendrils grow over and into the pale skin. You also notice what appears to be several needle marks, mostly on the arms, but there's one on the neck as well. Unfortunately, that's everything useful you're able to determine from inspecting the body. So did they give me... 
Okay, so they didn't. Oh, learn more about what led to the brutal death of the man whose body lies in the medical level's operating room. And yeah, I, there's nothing else I can. Hello. About the mushroom coal scavenger. All right, I guess we'll have to talk to the guard. I don't know if I need to buy anything from the med dude. It's hard for me to be sure what I need, but okay, doesn't let me doesn't let me loot the desk, doesn't let me loot the shelves. Alright. Doesn't let me use loot those shelves and oh you're just some random dude. Okay. Alright, um why does it feel like, yep, it feels like this is another room because it is another room. Oh, it requires hacking to get into that room though. Okay, so I can't, I can't get into there. I'll call it being, uh, being the sorcerer of the group. By all means, boss page, you got it. <laughs> you ever plan on live streams of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2? Yeah, actually, to be honest with you, originally, I was going to live stream Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 first and then do 3. Um, but then that didn't work out. What I'll probably end... You know what? It's go I, yes, I plan to do that, but it's going to be a while. Because we're going to do um, uh, Honor Mode run of Baldur's Gate 3 first. And then after that gets done, it's probably going to be time for me to go through the Dragon Age series. Because I would like to live stream all of the Dragon Age games before Dragon Age Dread Wolf comes out. So, uh, Origins, I think was like a what? 40, 60 hour game. Then um, two was like a 30 hour game. And then Inquisition, I think it was like another 60 hour or something of that sort. So, it's good. It, it would take a while for us to get through all those. So I wanna make sure we start early enough. I'm assuming Dread Wolf is probably gonna come out towards the end of the year. So hopefully, Tyranny, Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode, and then do uh, go through the, dr the entire Dragon Age series. Hopefully we'll have enough time for that. We'll see how it works out. But that's my plan as of right now. Um, have we been to the Armory? I don't think we have, so let's go to the Armory. Look forward to it. Awesome. Appreciate it, but Mike. All right. Auto turret. Auto turret. Cannot go in there. I assume the turrets will light me up if I try. Shells. Can't do the shells. Alright, move along. Really? You don't want to talk at all? Alright, all oh, this is stuff I can't do. Lucas. A short man rises from behind his desk with a grenade case in his hands. The heavy case meets the top of the desk with a thud, raising your eyebrows, which in turn makes the man's face turn into a smile. He removes his glove and shakes your hand with a strong, perhaps too strong, grip before addressing you. Don't worry, Slander. I ain't gonna blow us up. Nope. Anyway. Vincel told me you'd be staying with us for a while. Yeah, I like it here so far. Well, friend, make yourself at home. Can I have my weapon back? Of course, it was the, uh, yeah, five mil pistol and some ammo, if I recall correctly, right? This one? He produced a pistol that is in such bad condition, people would pay to get rid of it. Shetty, pistol item, bloody shotgun, interesting. Five mil. I came here with a forty with a forty-four, man. Uh wait a minute, so does it tell you at all? No, it doesn't tell you. And I have no so I guess persuasion I it does it not roll? It's either you have it or you don't. Let's see. Dread Wolf, what an accurate name for what we're feeling with that one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't disagree, Elric. <laughs> Isn't Bloodlines 2 coming out this year before Dread Wolf? Bloodlines 2 does, uh, uh, is probably going to come out. I might live stream that a little bit, but even with the mods, the game is still kind of janky. So it's not the kind of game that I, I would be all that comfortable with live streaming, but we'll see. Plus, there are some portions of that game that just irritate me too much. I just turn on God mode and I just go through it. <laughs> like, like that, the, the Sabat Hotel? No. <laughs> Not happening. Not happening at all. Lana, I'm one of the very few people excited for Bloodlines 2, but it's because I haven't played the first one, so I don't have that love for the first game as y'all. Man, the first game is so worth playing. The first game is fantastic. 
Ooh, right, right, right. Uh, Warhammer Space Marines 2 is also coming out this year. And that's going to be co-op. Absolutely, I'm going to be on it. Absolutely, I'm going to be on Highway. What's up, man? How are you? Hey, Slant, it's so glad to see you play this. It's a tough game, but worth it. Curious to see what you'll think of it. Thank you, thank you. I'm only going to live stream like one or two episodes of it. I don't know how well it holds up, like trying to live stream a full playthrough of it. But I definitely wanted to experience it because so many people have told me how great it is. And when Under Rail 2 comes out, we'll definitely live stream that as a community for sure. Abyss, Morgan, all day, twice on Sunday. <laughs> Mind you, I think Alistair is one of the greatest male romances in gaming, period. Like a lot of times, male romances, the developers don't put as much effort into that. I think they did an incredible job with Alistair. Really, really fun character. To, to me, playing as a human uh, female noble and romancing Alistair is one of the best playthroughs you can have in Dragon Age. One of the best endings, right? Really cool stuff. But no, I got I got to go with the toxicity. I got to go with the toxicity. We'll be romancing Morgan. Mike, what up, dude? How are you, man? Is there an RPG game you haven't played yet, but you'd like to play eventually? People keep telling me it's an old, old game. Um, I, I, it's you, I guess you die at the beginning of it, and like you've died multiple times. People keep telling me Planscape Torment. People keep telling me that Planscape Torment is the greatest story ever told in an RPG and it's a, of course a classic CRPG and it's a game where apparently you can avoid the vast majority of combat that you uh, come across and so you can really get through the game just dialoguing with everybody all of that sounds incredible and it sounds right up my alley supposedly the party members are incredible as well just supposed to be one of the most well-written experiences you can have in a game I've never played it I've never played it I don't know anything about it I've been hesitant to stream it because I feel like it's so old and again there's virtually no combat in it so I don't know how much you know my audience would be receptive to sitting down and watch something like that I, I also understand it's supposed to be a very long game like it could be easy like a hundred hours and so uh, I want it I really really want to experience that but I don't know when I'm gonna have the time to be able to just sit down on my own um, uh, playing it we'll see we'll see what happens is this that over rail you've been hearing about? It is. What's going on, Necromancer? Looking forward more to the Gothic remake. Mmm. I've never played Gothic or Risen. I did play Elix 2. Uh, but that's the only Piranha Bytes game I've ever played. And yeah, I am monitoring that Gothic remake. Definitely looking forward to it. Uh, and I'm hoping that it's going to be good. Because I, I plan to play it. I'm surprised you're interested in Space Marine 2. Seems like a mundane hack and slash. I'm only interested in it because it's Warhammer. I, I just want more Warhammer games. I absolutely plan to play um, Chaos Marine when that comes out as well. Basically, anything Warhammer related, I'm with it. I actually, on my on uh, my wife has my old Xbox in the living room. And so sometimes when I'm sitting in the living room with my daughter, I'll spin up a game and play it. I, uh, I downloaded Boat Gun was on Game Pass. So I downloaded that and played it for like 30, 40 minutes. Oh, with my daughter. It was hilarious. Absolutely not my type of game, but still entertaining to go through. <clears throat> no role fixed values. Okay, so fixed values. Got you, got you. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to Bioware games anymore, unfortunately. Unfortunately. What's going on, Justice? How are you? Disco Elysium just barely edges out Planscape for me. Yeah, I really enjoyed Elysium. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Nostalgia, uh, Google, Planescape Tournament wasn't even a finished game, unfortunately. Mm. So, I know you should play a game called Dragon's Dogma 2. It's from a very song, but it looks amazing. <laughs> you missed it already, Elric? <laughs> the combat gameplay of Torment absolutely sucks. Mm. That's what I heard. It's BG 1 2, but much worse. Mm. And I hate the combat in, in those games. Most people look at like Morgan Hope. I can fix this. It looks at old. Can I make it worse? You know it. <laughs> you know it. Get as toxic as you can for me, baby. Landscape Torment is a philosophical masterpiece. I'm really looking forward to experiencing that story. Leiliana over Morgan if you're doing a good aligned playthrough. But 
If you do it, if you're doing a playthrough that's got some edge to it, Morgan all day. Morgan all day. You could have completely removed the combat. Mm-hmm. Planescape Torment is definitely not a 100 hour game. Really? How old is how uh, long is it? 30 to 40 hours is a close estimate. Though you could stretch it over 50 to 60 hours if you try to explore every nook and cranny and read all the dialogue. Well, think about it. You see how I play games, right? I'm reading all the dialogue literally and I'm reading all the responses. So for me, it could end up being a significantly longer game. Because my understanding is the vast majority of it is text. You're just reading text over and over and over and over again. Bowgun is fantastic. Yeah, it was, it, it was pretty cool from what I saw. It was about 50 hour ish hours. Could have been longer, to be honest, but best experience as a mage. Why do you say it's best experience as a mage? Morgan does have red flags. It's just a use. Do not enter warding side full of bullet holes. <laughs> I'm still going straight through. A man of culture, I see. <laughs> not addicted to do it. DD2, I can stop anytime. I want you to tell me how uh, good that true ending is when you finally get it, Elric. <laughs> um, all right, I'm not going to be able to persuade him. I know that. Oh, so this is probably like different levels of persuade, right? Um, uh, you could uh, change to something else, change to a shotgun or 44. Interesting. Um, it was a five mil pistol, but not that one. Then who's? Oh. This got to be Newton's gun. Heh, my bad. Here you go. He hands you your weapon. There. With that out of the way, might interest you in a couple more things. Hmm? You and Bessel are good pals. Pals? We're brothers. I'm sorry. I never noticed the resemblance. Well, the respirators don't exactly help. <laughs> but yeah, we're bros. We came to this station together some years ago. When they saw how cool we were, they wouldn't let us leave. He laughs. Hey, that's exactly how it went. <laughs> I'd like to see your stock. All right. Let's see. Um, 10%. Uh, it's weird trying to figure out durability 510, durability 240. Mechanical 16%, cold 3%. All right, so right hand leather armor, that's a little bit better. What's this? Insulated overcoat. So wait. Okay, yeah, that's probably the same deal. This insulated vest carries a hybrid ballistic panel. Comes with a black overcoat that helps with hiding. Ha ha ha. Ooh, lead armor. And it, that's worse. Okay. I don't need pull, pull trigger. I already got armor. I'm good on that. Um, I don't have boots. Do this energy shield emitter and headgear. Um, I could use some headgear probably. Stealth decreased. Stealth increased. Intimidation increased. Seeker goggles. These goggles could pay in a pair of seeker lenses. If dodge decreased by 25%. No, we're not doing that. Hmm, that's what Shapeshift was a better mage spec. Morgan would even me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Telling the dialogue options open up with the wisdom, intelligence stat, and planscape. Mage ties into it a ton. Throw stats, you unlock more endings and avoid a ton of fights. Gotcha, okay, that's the type of character I... I had planned to play a very persuasive character, but I didn't know those stats would tie into being a mage as well. Plus, lore-wise, it makes the most sense for the nameless one to be a mage. Nice. All right, then. Well, now I know. I'll do it that way. I prefer pure mage over AW. What's AW? Okay, I'm specializing in throwing weapons. I'm wondering if I should pick up a few grenades. There's frag grenades and then high explosive grenades. Oh, so they're, they're like, no matter what. Hold on. Okay, they don't like giving me these grenades. I don't have any grenades, though. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can give them some of this food and stuff, though. Yeah, actually, we can do that. No? they 
can take it. Red flag, but red's my favorite color, so it's fine for me. <laughs> but as rich as well. <laughs> I, I don't know if uh, Morgan is interested in being anybody's wife, sir. You might have to let that go. What is this? Pellet mold, a disposable mold for 20 small shotgun pellets. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. I've only got 200 credits. I feel like I'm. I need. Oh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know how psionic powers work, so I don't really know what I need to buy yet. So I should probably let this go until I've explored the world a little bit more and have a greater understanding of how combat works. Headlamp. This combat purpose headlamp meant to be mounted to a mountain and connected to an energy core. What does it do? Required crafting skills. Electronics 26. Alright. Um, here. We'll wait on this. You have to start as a fighter and learn how to become a mage or someone. It's not like most CRPGs where you can select your class of character creation. Oh, uh, okay. All right, that's fine. I'll keep it in mind. All right. No, I can do that. Gorski. Ooh, it lets me uh, put the shelves. Of course it does, because there's nothing there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The tall, imposing figure of this battle-scarred veteran towers before you. You met Gorski before. He's one of the counselors that interviewed you when you first arrived. So, you passed all of Tam's little tested exercises. That could not have been easy, but don't think you're some kind of hot shot now. You are yet to deserve the privilege you've been given. I'm looking forward to the opportunity. We'll see. So why are you here? I'm here for some target practice. Go ahead, then. Yeah, but how do these consoles work? Gorski's eyes gradually move across the range, crowned by a constantly intensifying frown. He is alone with you. I guess I'll have to do it. All right, look here. Simple. You use the console to set the target distance, right? Then you start a session. The session will track your hits and misses automatically, so you can check your progress while you shoot. When you've had enough in the session, what distance do I set? Well, it depends on the weapon now, doesn't it? If you got a rifle, you can set it to the max. Otherwise, try eight yards. Experiment a little. I had more questions. What questions? Uh, how these counts work? Yeah, all right, you said that. All right, I have more questions. Yep, nothing. Okay. Welcome to the shooting range. What do you wish to do? Configure target distance. Choose target distance, eight meters. Uh, start new session. Session started. Oops. Wait, are they gonna force me to use my own, um, my own ammo? Still can't just press reload. Reload current weapon. That didn't work. Reaction sign. Reload weapon. That didn't work. What in the hell? What if I do it while in here? What in the hell? Why did it need me to do it from the the, the the menu. What is that about? Crafting is pretty involved. Hmm. Plants can have some awful moments. You can think the waves of combat in the hotel and bloodlines is bad. Let me tell you about a certain box labyrinth puzzle with tons of combat. Hmm. Building the game by, in this game by far, a stealth sniper. You can also craft the best gear in the game. 
crafting is pretty involved. This game unironically has one of, if not the best crafting systems in any RPG. Really? Oh, that's interesting. What's up, Buck? It's one of the best characters locked behind it. It also happens to be one of the few real dungeon crawls in Planescape Torment, and it's not mandatory. It's just less combat than in BG in general. If you want a certain companion, sure, but again, it's only one of a few major dungeon crawls. Okay. I will keep it in mind. session. Continue. Leave. Nope, they don't give you your, uh, your ammo back. You're just stuck. Alright. Well, that was kind of a waste, but it's fine. Go pew pew. <laughs> pew pew. And comes in Cantina. Oh, that's where the guy I just spoke to was. Station platform is high. Get out. What's administration and library? I am hungry. One moment, please. light switch impacts whether or not you see certain things when highlighted. Oh! Don't click that. Don't click that. Alright. Here's the commoner. Commoner can't... Ooh! If they'll let me loot the dice, though. Get kind of tired of it. Every time I'm able to loot something, it's because it's empty. Come on now. Reward me from the, for my exploration, please. Something specific. there previously during your testing period. Mm -hmm. Here's one of the counselors here at the Southgate Station. Good to see you found your way to my office, Slam. How do you like your new home so far? It's pretty good. I can see myself staying here for a long time. That's good to hear. So anyway, how can I help you? What can you tell me about Four City? It's a city to the north that spans both levels of Underrail. It serves as a gateway to both the upper Underrail and to the United States' territory to the south, to the north. The city used to be co controlled by the Biocorp security forces, but they went rogue and split into smaller factions. This was followed by a couple of years of street wars between these factions. Now, fighting ceased eventually in light of outside threats and serious infrastructural problems, and nowadays, the three surviving factions rule the city together through their appointed mayors. Can you tell me a bit about United Stations? Certainly. United Stations, also called Union by some, is a confederacy of stations in North and Central Underrail. It's an attempt to unify the entirety of Underrail so that we can all work together towards a better future for the human race. 
Similar to our station, the union is ruled by a council of five. Most stations of the union have some degree of autonomy as well. The United States are constantly expanding, and while no stations here in the South are yet to become part of it, something like that will surely happen in the near future. What can you tell me about Core City? Oh, we already did that. I want to learn about the Protectorate. The Underrail Protectorate is a military organization that protects the United States from external and internal threats. It predates the Union itself, and it also played a crucial role in its creation. The Protectorate is under the command of General Melick, who is widely considered to be the most powerful man in Underrail. He holds a special place in the United States Council of Five, and some also believe him to be the de facto ruler of it. Are there plans for SGS to join the United States at some point? Our citizens and our counselors are divided on that matter. We currently have good trading relations with the Union, and I personally think it would be a good idea to be among the first to join it here in the South. We are arguably the most powerful faction in these parts, so we can position ourselves advantageously in their organization and also retain a higher degree of independence. This would also ensure we avoid any potential military conflict in the future should the Protectorate decide to move against some of the less civilized communities in the neighborhood. But as I said, not everyone agrees with me here. You must understand that many of our current citizens come from organizations that have, for various reasons, been Protectorate's targets in the past, so they are not very keen on being buddies with their old enemies. But let me ask you, what is your opinion on the matter? Would you like to see your station become a member of the United Stations? I hate to be wishy-washy, so we'll say yeah. Yes, I think it's a good idea. Humanity is certainly better off united. I'm very glad to hear that, and I couldn't agree more. See you later. All right, can we get through that door? Nope. So, nothing else to do here. RPK, what's going on, man? How are you? Envy Box Everywhere just reminds me of BG3. <laughs> Curious to see how games have conditioned you to think that you uh, think you would have gotten your ammo back, but Underworld says no because nothing is free as Underworld. Yep, I noticed. <laughs> I noticed that I'm going to be much more careful in the future about what I decide to extinguish. Mind you, I didn't mind because I'm not going to be focusing on using guns anyway. Oh, so I must have come for the private quarters level. Okay, yep, yep, yep. That's exactly where I came from. Okay. Let me check my room. I want to see if that camera can uh, can see me from all the way over here. Oh wait, I didn't buy any. God dog it! I didn't buy any lock picks yet. All right, I have to come back. I have to come back. Real quick. Did you get the Rogue Trader Collections Edition? Uh, uh, I purchased it, but it has not been delivered to me yet. No. So, uh, did I go to engineering yet? I don't think we have gone to engineering. K is part of Merch's Guild. <laughs> Not people. They're working on getting it sent out to everybody. Yep, that's how I plan to play it, boss page. For the most part, not um fighting anybody except they mentioned that there's one major uh, dungeon you have to go through in order to get a, a party member so I'll probably end up doing that take care boss pay see you tomorrow man can't do that can't do that and there's a security camera right there so we should avoid that Oh, there's three people here. Okay. Oh, no time to chat. Oh, Najee won't talk to me. Ezra. Good lord, what happened to Ezra? 
As he turns around to face you, you immediately notice there is something off with this man. His face is pale and hairless. He is missing one of his eyes and instead wires protrude from his eye socket, traveling over the side of his face and disappearing down the back of his neck. The other eye is almost colorless, with the pupil so contracted that you question whether he can even see at all. He speaks with a calm and even voice. Hello, Slander. I am Ezra. I act as the head network administrator and chief of the entire engineering sector. Are you blind, Ezra? Ezra raises his hand slowly and extends it towards you. He holds two of his fingers in front of your face for a moment, each pointing at one of your eyes before retracting the hand. What is it exactly that you do here? Me specifically, the cyber department, or the engineering sector? The cyber department. We maintain and improve the station's internal network. We write programs for all automated systems at the station. And what do you do specifically? I make sure that all parts of the station's internal network are communicating properly and securely, and that all the scripts are running as they should. I also oversee all operations of the engineering sector. What does the engineering sector do in general? We construct, deconstruct, research, upgrade, Listing all the specific things we do would take too much of my time. Go around and talk to people working here. They might be one to let you know the details of their projects. Let's talk about something else, such as... I hear you are a powerful mind controller. Is this true? Ezra remains silent and just stares at you. If this is true, I'd like to learn from you. He just keeps staring at you. Stare back at him. At first, nothing happens, and the two of you just stand there staring at each other. Your thoughts slowly start to drift away from what you are doing, and you almost don't even notice that you're losing control of your own body. The world around you blurs away until the only thing you can clearly see is Ezra's one eye staring at you. It seems as if it's not looking at your face, but through it, into your mind. Will, try to wrestle back the control of your body. You feel Ezra's surprise as you fight back, and for a moment, you are able to break his grip on you. Continue focusing and attempt to take control of him. You attempt to reach out for him with your mind, but the element of surprise is gone. Ezra's will wraps around you and crushes your consciousness. Damn. That was... <gasps> find yourself on a small island in the middle of a lake with no recollection of how you got here? Oh, what is this? A young Azura day. Oh, snap. I don't have any throwing weapons. I don't have any side powers either. That death counter might be incoming. <laughs> and the abyss is ready. Here we go. <laughs> Death number one incoming. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Kanchu, I like the game. I don't think it's a good streaming game, uh, but but I like it. I could definitely see if I um, had known about it when it came out, I would have played this game. And it makes me very excited for Under Rail 2. I'm definitely going to be playing Under Rail 2. RPK, are you talking to me? You really must like that game. Did you get the same for the... Oh, 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 because I got the collector's edition for Rogue Trader? I didn't know I was going to like Wrath of the Righteous as much as I did, so no, I didn't get the collector's edition for it. Oh, there's only two mandatory fights? Okay. Hmm. And so it begins. <laughs> All right. It's a bit boring to watch, but enjoyable in a way. Let's go, I figured. Try enough. 
put a little um, spice on the dialogue to make it a little bit more interesting. But tyranny will probably be a little bit more fun for people. It's all good. All right, young Azura Day. This is literally the only combat option that we have, so let's go with it. All right, that's doing decent damage. Make sure he has to do some work to get to us. Wow, he's hitting us. He's hitting us consistently. And we are not hitting him consistently. Well, I'll take that back. We kind of are. This, all this stuff doesn't, it, it doesn't block him from being able to shoot us? I'm, I'm getting my... My behind whipped. All right, there's that. Uh, not again. Kill a living creature. Oh, we're back. But I'm back in my room. That's fascinating. And I, don't, I didn't get any powers for this or anything. What in the hell? This dude is, that dude is a real, real asshole. All right, uh, they didn't even let me loot um, that particular creature. So I guess, was it supposed to be just all in my mind? Would you voice over 40K novels? 100%, I'd love to do that. I like to watch those games depending on the streamer though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you gotta uh, have a way to to make it more interesting for people. Is there a, a button to... Yeah, hold on. Let's, let's do that, there we go. Because I don't, I don't feel comfortable just walking around with um, the pistol hanging on my side. But yeah, like that's why I try to do the different voices depending on who's talking and put different inflections on it to try to make it more entertaining when you're going through text and text and text. Because I know for a lot of people, watching those type of games is not nearly as uh uh fun i love this game heard about it for years like what did you do to me only what you wanted consider the first lesson free of charge i want to learn more sci abilities i could teach you how to short circuit the brains of others instill fear in them or break their minds. Hmm. I want to learn how to scare others. I want to learn how to, uh, requires thought control 30 or 45. I don't have either, right? I want to learn how to scare others. You are not ready for that yet, and I'm certainly not ready to break their minds. Dag it. All right. Do you have anything to trade? Oh, blueprint, cloaking device, EMP grenade, goggles, contains stress on a, to create a pair of goggles, psionic headband, taser, can be tied to explosive charge to trigger a time detonation, plasma core, Pistol frame. Okay, so this is to motion tracker. Increases dodge, sound, and headband. Seeker night vision goggles. That's interesting. Okay. So I tabbed out. Did you die or not? I lived. <laughs> and don't you do no for now of this. I lived. Period. <laughs> Point blank. Period. All right. Oh wait. Oh, he has a shield. That's what that other bar is for. Uh. So do I really have to use a health object in order to heal this? There's no like. 
automatic health thingamajig I can I can tap into. I am a citizen after all. None of these dudes are all that far from I'm in charge of this little workshop here. Nice to meet you, Arrow. I'm Slender. So, you looking for something specific or just looking around? Tanner tells me you know a way to restore power to the outpost in the north. He mm. nods. Right. I remember taking a look at the power generator there a while back. I couldn't do anything about it back then because I didn't have this. He rummages through the boxes out on the table before producing something resembling an energy core. Here, it's a flux controller. If you insert it into the slot at the front of the power generator, it should get it running again. After that, you ought to be able to reactivate all the outposts. I'm afraid you have to do that manually though. You see, each of them has a switch that cuts off the power in case of a hazard. Got it, thanks. I'll give it a try. Wait, I have to do it manually. And there's a switch that cuts off the power and Okay, cool. That's fine. Nothing in the shells, nothing in the shells. Barrel, what's in the barrel? Ooh, metal scraps. Okay. That might not actually be useful, but it's fine. At least it finally gave us something for all these containers we've been going in. Ooh, what's this? Empty shotgun shell. Can't ever have. Ooh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Wait. We're all the way over here, though. I bet you he can't see us. All the way over here? Yeah, no, that's not a problem. Who are you? Gorin. You aren't supposed to watch. You aren't supposed to watch the arena in here, so keep this quiet, okay? Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of 40K novels without audio version yet. Would you do commissions? 100%. I'd have no problems with it. But I don't know who to reach out to for that kind of stuff. It's hard to uh, tell in those situations who actually has control over the novel and decides you have a legal right to do an audio recording of this. So, but if I could, psh, absolutely. Absolutely. Voice will work is something I, I really, really want to do, to be honest with you. I would love uh, to be able to live a life where I'm able to support myself by playing games, doing content about games, and voice acting for books, games, and cartoons. Like, that's that's the life I'm trying to live towards. Do that by day, take care of the family, and all that stuff by night. So, we'll see. One day. One day I might get over there. Um, medical and psionics, we already went there. We already did all of this, right? And then this is agronomy and pens. Where is, uh, maybe commons and canteen that is where that other one is. A lot of YouTubers do it all the time. What, voice act uh, in the books, really? Why is that red? In fact, I don't care why it's, you know, no, we'll hold on. Because it's red and I don't know if that's gonna cause people to come by. You come up to a rangy man with long hair who is cutting open the head of a large, monstrous creature, formerly an untamable beast. It is now but a stiff volunteer to post-mortem dissection, to science, and soon enough the man makes the final incision, after which he pushes his hand through to extract a single, long, sharp spine. Greenish, sticky fluid dribbles out of the opening and all over the floor as the man wipes the spine clean before laying it aside, and that is the moment in which he notices you. Careful, you don't want to get in contact with its toxin. He returns to cutting through the creature as he talks to you. My name is Quentin. Don't bother introducing yourself. I know who you are. You're slandered, and you just got admitted to the station. I shake your hand, but you can see why that wouldn't be a good idea. 
What kind of creature is that? It's a burrower. It's one nasty creature that digs around, laying eggs all over the place. They are more numerous deeper underground, but you can still find a few roaming the lower under rail in the surrounding caves. If you meet one, be careful. It will spit thick, hard spines at you that are coated with poison. What are you doing exactly? I'm collecting its poison glands. We can use those to produce other chemicals or to coat crossbow bolts. What's in that room over there? We're growing mushrooms of different kinds there. Of course, most notably the mind shrooms. They are one of the most potent and certainly one of the safest psionic catalysts. The largely popular psi boosters are made from mind shrooms, in case you didn't know. I'm told you can teach psionics. Hmm, yes, that is correct. Are you interested in learning, perhaps? Yes, will you teach me? Hmm, I heard you scored highly on Tanner's test, so yes, I will teach you what I can. If you perform one little task for me, which task is that? You see, I was conducting some experiments on rat hounds a while back. It was quite close to a breakthrough as well until a little accident happened and Brett forced me to get rid of the creatures. Hmm. Now I cannot finish the experiments. Not here, anyway. What kind of experiments were you conducting? I was working on developing a substance that would transform the muscle and other types of tissue into a potent mushroom fertilizer. What happened? Well, I never really had an appropriate place to keep the rat hound, so I drilled breathing holes into a couple of those large crates and kept them there. It turns out I underestimated them, and after a while they chewed their way out of their predicament. <laughs> nice. There's channels with over 200,000 subs that voice over entire novels. It wouldn't be a copyright violation. Really? Wow, I didn't know that. I wonder how that works. Can you give me the name of um, a Vox in the Void? Oh man, I would love to do that. Let me send the message to myself. Make sure I look at some of his content. A Vox in the Void. Bro, work around could be summarizing and paraphrasing the novels. I'd, I actually love to read as well, and I've never read any other Warhammer books. I'd love to uh, read them, uh, voice act them, and summarize them. I'd do the whole shebang. Only thing is, he probably needs, like, animation and things that play while he's voice acting it, right? I'm not an animator, so I'd have to figure out that. Mm. Mm. But then doing the boys over here and there can't copyright that. Mm. That would be fantastic if I could do that. Fantastic. I've been listening to a podcast about Warhammer lore. I love Warhammer 40k so much. I've fallen in love with it after playing Road Trader. I think it's incredible. You can start with slideshows. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could look at what some of his early videos look like. Okay. What kind of experiments were you conducting? Uh, oh, he already told me that. Uh, what do you need me to do? I prepared the final version of the concoction and filled a set of crossbow bolts with it. I need you to go out there into the caves and shoot a rat hound with it, and then once it's dead, collect a tissue sample from around the wound. If you don't have a crossbow, you can borrow mine. It's in that locker over there in the corner. It's not like I get to use it much these days anyway. And if I do this, you'll teach me for free? I'll teach you one side ability for free. You have to pay for the rest. Mercantile. Make that two free side abilities. And you got yourself a deal. Even though I think he specializes in the psi abilities that I don't use. Hmm. Very well, but you better bring me a good tissue sample. Here are the bolts. Good hunting. Before I leave. Yes. Uh, never mind. He 
nods and resumes his work. Alright, he's got, uh, there we go, this locker. And, oh, that's the same, um, uh, crossbow thing I already had, but, oh, wow. Oh, wait, did I talk to you? Bob Miss? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Lock picking, 55. I don't have enough of that anyway. Oh, are the barrels like garbage cans, basically? 45 case, dirty rag. Oh, this is for tailoring. Okay, so like when we're doing leather armor and things of that nature. Hmm. Lake Poppy, Lake Poppy. Logan, welcome to Hydroponics. Lake Poppy, Lake Poppy. Okay. Patrick, what's going on, man? Slagged, if you like Warhammer turn-based games, you should try Mechanicus. It has some unique mechanics. Tricky at first, but so fun once you get the hang of it. Yep, people kept telling me about Mechanicus and um, uh, Chaos something. Uh, Chaos Marine, Chaos War. So, some uh, turn-based game that came out. So my understanding is Mechanicus, um, the combat is really good, but the story is that. Whereas the Chaos game is interesting combat and interesting story. But I'll probably just end up playing both of them, to be honest with you. He seems untrustworthy. <laughs> Mechanic is more like XCOM than Rogue Trader. No real plot or writing. Exactly. That's what I heard. No story to it. I've been hooked on uh, Gladius. Um, oh, is that a specific book series? Gladius was decent. I just watched The Gentleman. That was good. Did play some Battle Sector, but I'd rather actually play the board game. Can I get in here? Oh, that's from over here? Okay, yeah, that's from over here. Alright, let's go out over here. See what else? Hey, it lets us in here. And light switch, light switch, well. Show, show. Oh, there's hoppers over here. You must be slander. They call me Big Bread. So you've passed all the tests. I see. Couldn't have been easy. Those are just getting harder and harder in recent years. They were pretty hard, but I like challenges. You're going to love it here then. So, what brings you to the pens? What is this place? This is the agronomy sector, where we grow and harvest all kinds of plants. But we also breed animals for food. In short, our job is to provide food for the station in any way possible. Do you have anything to trade? What are you for? Drawing that. Put it at the target and attempt to immobilize it for up to two turns. Hmm. Blueprint for throwing that. Blueprint for combat gloves. Blueprint for boots. Credits. Dog crate. Attempt to capture the target inside the crate. Wow, you. They really focus on capturing things. Okay. That's interesting. I'm sure there be some uh, quests regarding that. Oh, wait. Um, he can probably see me, can't he? Well, he's not pointing in the right direction. Seems like I should be able to open this door considering I'm behind it. Stealth mode? Okay, and can I open this? Oh, that requires lock. Oh, lock pick 15. Ah, all right. So I need to get some lock picks. I'm just not sure what chaos game you mean. Chaos is a whole thing in 40k. Uh, here, hold on a second. I am talking about Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. That's the game people keep telling me about. Night, Abyss. Take care. Low, low chance. Rise, the rise of a road trader are uh, text heavy. <laughs> yeah, Mechanicus isn't very plot driven. Still a really fun combat. Okay, I might have to try that out. I see you've been back at it for a while. Be curious about this game too. How are you finding it? What's going on, Brian? Uh, I like it a lot. I think it's a very interesting CRPG. Um, it's, it's very focused on difficulty though. 
you know, so usually I don't play games that are uh, have a high focus on challenge, but if you like those type of games, this is definitely uh, one for you. Uh, I also, from I'm again, I haven't played much of it, but from what I've heard, this game has an incredible story, really, really cool story that makes it well worth playing. And there's a lot of different builds you can use. Ooh, more ammo and a few players. So, ton of different ways you can approach the, the game. They don't try to lock you into being just uh, one particular way at all. Which is also really cool. And they regicide, not chaos guy. Looks like they gave Donald's term, it's got you. They comment on the fact that it's too expensive to voice everything, even though it's what the market wants. Exactly. Wait a minute. What do you mean it's the same they took down Chaos Gate? How did they take it down? If you capture, can you... Uh, I don't know what you're saying, Martin. I never did could afford a full voice actors exact I yep I understand it I mean to be honest with you that's part of how I made my channel po popular I would voice act these unvoiced sections in games because the developer specifically Alcat didn't have enough money to do it otherwise and I've honestly come to uh, prefer that like I, I, I really like being able to I like feeling like I'm giving people unique content that they wouldn't be able to get otherwise and I always know when I'm doing the voice acting for these games that don't have voice acting otherwise, I know I'm giving you something unique. Um, I'd like to learn some abilities. Certainly, I can teach you temporal distortion, limited temporal increment, and psychotemporal dilation. Tell me about temporal distortion. Uh, oh. Temporal distortion is a powerful ability that allows a manipulator to cause damage by exploiting a phenomenon called temporal recoil, the natural tendency of time to revert to its most stable state upon being manipulated. While the time between distortion and the manifestation of the resulting recoil will always be a fixed interval, the more one applies temporal distortion within this period of time, the more energy the recoil will have and will thus cause more damage to the affected matter as space-time is being rapidly untwisted into its original form. Fast thinking and skilled manipulators can use temporal distortion to utterly devastate an effect. It will cost you only 20 Stygian coins to learn this ability, but since we're in SGS, I'll accept 50 credits as well, whichever you have. Here you go. Give him 50 SGS credits. Excellent, excellent. He pockets the money now. Unless we want to be subjected to odd stares from the rest of the patrons, I propose we move to one of the other rooms where you can train in relative peace and quiet. We could use my room. Perfect. I'm right behind you. Lead the way. Oh, and I've learned the ability? Okay. That's helpful. But, uh... Um... Oh, here we go, Sai. Oh, I already had one. Oh, is this? Whoops. And how do I use it in combat, though? Sai, please. Sai, base side cost modifier. An additional 110%. So you can have up to up to eight powers. So the developer lost the rights to Chaos Gate? How'd that happen? That's the part I don't like watching your videos. It's too slow for me. <laughs> I understand. I understand. That's why I prefer something like Tyranny, where it's like, okay, talk in combat, talk in combat, talk in combat, talk in combat. And it's going to look a little bit more up to date, so it's a little bit easier to maintain people's uh, attention. Mm. The studio rights to 40k expired and Steam delisted it. Damn. Yeah. 
So are they going to work on a sequel? Or is the developer kind of dead in the water? Sure, what's going on, man? That's mad smart. I love being immersed in putting yourself in the game and filling the gaps in the narration of the story. It's definitely entertaining and fun. Yep, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm not super into 40k more D D person only played a few 40k titles. Can't get into the books either, try as I may. I understand Chaos Gate got taken down. I just looked it up on Steam and it's for sale. Is there an online aspect to it that isn't up anymore? Yeah, maybe it was taken down, but they got it back up. No, bug my it's that's coming from the game. <laughs> I never played Chaos Gate, so I can't uh, comment. I wasn't like tracking updates for it, but it's definitely on my list. You know what? This probably a game I'll end up streaming. All right, Neural Overlord, Overlord, short circuits the central nervous system of a living target, dealing 14 to 19 electrical damage. Damage is increased by 10% for every target's point of intelligence above five. This damage cannot be shielded and bypasses standard electrical resistance, but can be lowered by the target's resolve. Um, it's across 18 action points and 17 side. Temporal distortion places a debuff on the target that lasts two turns and deals six through nine mechanical and energy damage when it expires. In the case the target is already affected by this, this damage will be increased by 20% and the newly applied temporal distortion will have the same duration and damage bonus. Damage dealt by this ability ignores shield and 50% of damage resistance threshold. This ability cannot critically hit. Okay. Such a thing. Uh, why can't you teach me more advanced temporal manipulation abilities? They require a bit more effort on my part and a bit more time for the student to fully learn. More time than I usually spend in one place. And, well, I'm not helping myself by telling you this, but those few who stick with temporal manipulation tend to find it simpler and cheaper to just use psionic imprinting for the more time-consuming abilities. You know, one of those single-use imprinting devices. And add to that the fact that young psionics would rather spend that time on learning implosion or, say, cryokinetic orb. And you get the whole picture. I'd like to learn some abilities. Certainly, but he can only teach us the ones that we are not prepared for. All right. One more stuff. So, should I... Okay, I should not have been able to use those psionic abilities when uh, facing the, the rat thing, thing with Jake. So, that's fine. You. Let's do that. There we go. And yep, we're good. Um. And lower. Here, hold on. Let me make sure. Let's look at the notes. Retrieve the package. That's what we're about to do. Learn more about that. We don't have a way to do that. Reactivate the power generator. We're going to do that. Shoot a rod high with the what a bow Quentin gave you and collect the tissue sample. Let's not forget to do that. Putrefying bolt, experimental putrefying bolt that should slowly decompose targets' muscles. Okay, yep, let's make sure we put that there. Flux control, a vital component of any modern power generator, right? Yep, we'll deal with that in a moment. Uh, SGS foot locker key. Um, oh, oh, that's right, so we weren't holding a, Oh, we didn't already have a crossbow uh, bolt loader. Okay, fine. Now barbecue. Oh, we could have ate some steak, some food probably to uh, get some help back. But that's fine. Isn't Chaos Gate like Diablo? I'm not sure. I never played it. Uh, but Diablo is in turn based, right? So if if so, no, it's not like, quite like Diablo. Chaos Gate is a turn based and positional game. Not really like Diablo. There we go. Okay, cool. Space Wolf. 40k Space Wolf got delisted. Oh. So many 40k games get delisted. So is that because of Games Workshop? Is Games Workshop too stringent with the license and that's what causes those games to be delisted? Hey Slander, wanna stop by and say appreciate your content. Keep it up. Thank you, Shargan. Appreciate it. Glad you've been enjoying the content, dude. Alright, let's go to the platform and barracks. Shells are empty. SE. Um, locker, power 
more bombs. Save there. Excellent. supposed to get across. Maybe that's just a way to go around. Hey, I'm confused. Um, wait a minute, what's this? So this is out. What's this? Oh, uh, no. Come on. Back up the stairs. What's this then? Centuries Roman. What's this? Packet. Oh, this is the package action. Excellent. Lock picking thirty. Lock picking thirty. Hi. You must be slander. Name's Roman. I'm in charge of this barricade. Wish I had time to chat, but I'm quite busy right now. And good night. Take care, Martin. Have a good night. Have you made any progress in clearing the tunnel? Not much so far. We have to dig deep enough to safely plant the explosives. Otherwise, we risk damaging the tunnel even more. How much damage did the earthquake do? We're not sure. It might be that the tunnel just caved in a couple of places. I've sent party to the tunnel's side entrances to investigate. We'll know more when they return. Have you made it? Uh, I'll leave you to your work. Okay. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. A lean, athletic man greets you with a friendly, resonant voice. Hello, friend. I don't believe we've met. My name is Bisson. Well met, Bisson. I'm slandered. I'd love to chat, but as you can see, we're a bit too busy right now. Is there something you need? What are you doing? I'm helping with clearing up the tunnel by using telekinetic manipulation. Can you teach me psi abilities? I can teach you psychokinetics if you're interested. I'm afraid I'll have to charge you. That's all right. Uh, why do you have to charge me? I'm not a scavenger and I'm not a manufacturer. Teaching is how I get by. That's all right. What can you teach me? When it comes to psionics, I can teach you telekinetic punch, force field, force ignition, and electrokinesis. What is a telekinetic punch exactly? It's when you focus your mind to create a telekinetic ball and launch it at your target. Impact is often so strong that if you hit a living target with it, you're likely to stun it for a short while. I can teach you this ability for 50 credits. On second thought, I'd rather spend my money on something else. When it comes to psionics, okay, never mind. I'm pretty sure that's not the one I'm specializing in. Where did you learn to use psionics? Is there some psionic guru roaming the underwear? He laughs. Perhaps there is, friend. But the man who taught me was far from a guru. He knew a few techniques, and I had some coins. We exchanged. It was the bare basics, but it got me started. Refined the rest on my own. Any more teachers you know of? Sure, you got two in SGS, besides me, of course. Ezra can teach you thought control abilities, while Quentin's an expert in metathermics. Uh, and I hear there's another psionic at the bar, stuck because of the earthquake. There's also the possibility of undergoing cerebral imprinting with psionic mentors, but I'm not a fan of those. Why? What's wrong with them? I prefer... The natural way. It works better for me. Imprinting might be a shortcut to ability, but it is not a shortcut to wisdom. Also, while most psionic mentors are safe if used properly, some use low quality or modified devices and eventually end up derailed. No different than lunatics. I heard a while ago, I think, a story about some junkies who didn't even use them for psionic reasons at all, but heavily modified them to get kind of high. But that is a whole different story. Again, if you obtain them from reliable sources, they're safe to use, my friend. Damn, there's a lot of layers to this game. 
Interesting, interesting, interesting. All right. Reactivate, learn more about. Retrieve the package from the barracks at SGS platform near the tunnel and take it to the warehouse south of GMS compound. But let me see, learn more. Reactivate the power and retake the outposts in the cave tunnels to the north. And I wanted to the north where? This is supposed to be the cave exit, right? <laughs> All right, this sounds like the beginning of combat. Okay, I think that's enough. Um, we've been streaming for, I believe, around three hours, and it gives you a pretty good preview of what this game is like, ex at least for its intro section. Again, from what I've heard, the story for this game is absolutely phenomenal. Well, well, well worth experiencing. So we might do one more stream of this, or I might just jump straight into Tyranny. Uh, I'm thinking about I'll probably jump straight into Tyranny, but I might play this on my own so I could try to do some content for it. I know a few of you said you feel like you would enjoy seeing like a new player guide that helps explain how to do it. And in fact, that would probably be really nice to have before Underrail 2 comes out. So I might end up playing this on my own, but I don't think it's all that great a game to stream. I think it's probably hard on uh, people to watch, especially those people who are used to games like we do more usually like um, uh, uh, Tyranny uh, for the next go round. But this has definitely been fun. I definitely see the appeal. And again, I'll probably end up playing it on my own. So if you all end up wanting to see some specific content for it, definitely let me know. But for now, uh, that's my stream. Hope you all enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next stream. Take care. Ghost, what's up, man? No, I didn't beat Dragon's Dogma 2, but I just got tired of it. I needed to uh, switch up. So I decided to do this for a night. Thanks, RPK. Glad you enjoyed it. Take care. Take care, Conchu. Good to see you again tonight. See you another time. Yep. Take care, Bugmite. Always good to see you, man.